You're watching NASA TV. Good morning, and welcome to the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Good morning and welcome to the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. I'm Leah Cheshire and on this first day of November, NASA astronauts Laurel O'Hara and Jasmine Mobelli are preparing for what will be both crew members' first spacewalks. Mobelli arrived at the space station as part of Crew 7 in, in August and O'Hara arrived on the Soyuz MS-24 spacecraft in September. This is the 269th spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. And it's also known as US EVA 89. Helping the crew get suited up today are JAXA, or Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Satoshi Furukawa there on the right, as well as European Space Agency astronaut Andy Mogensen. Mogensen will also serve as the driver of the Canadarm2 later in today's spacewalk with Jasmine Mabelli aboard. NASA astronauts Jasmine Mogbelli and Laurel O'Hara will exit the station's Quest airlock to remove an electronics box called the Radio Frequency Group from a communications antenna on station. They'll also replace one of 12 trundle bearing assemblies on a solar alpha rotary joint. These bearings enable the station's solar arrays to rotate properly and track the sun as the station orbits the Earth. The insert pre-read clock resumed at 1031 GMT. Copy 1031. This view from Mission Control Houston here at Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. And this one coming from the International Space Station and the Quest airlock. Currently, both crew members and Satoshi Furukawa, along with Andy Mogensen, are in the uh, equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock, continuing their in suit light, or they've just completed their in suit light exercise and pre breathe protocols and are now stepping through in preparation for uh, moving into the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock behind Mogensen. We were discussing the tasks slated for today. The crew members will replace one of 12 trundle bearing assemblies on the solar alpha rotary joint. These bearings enable the station's solar arrays to rotate properly and track the sun as the station orbits the Earth. So when looking at the space station, the antenna is on the starboard or right side of the truss, and the rotary joint is on the port or the left side. Before we get started today, let's get a different perspective of the spacewalk. So we'll take a look at the animation detailing the events narrated by spacewalk officer Sandy Fletcher. This is the second radio frequency group retrieval EVA. EV1 and EV2 egress the airlock and proceed to the forward face of the truss. Heading port the crew put down safety tether green hooks and continue outboard of the solar array rotating joint. EV1 goes to the 2 Alpha Beta Gimbal assembly and secures a crew lock bag of tools. Using the pistol grip tool, EV1 releases four bolts on the H fixture and then removes it. EV1 then surveys the worksite.
Meanwhile, EV2 goes to the solar array rotating joint and removes a cover, exposing a trundle bearing assembly. After disconnecting an electrical cable, EV2 uses the pistol grip tool to release three bolts and remove the trundle bearing assembly. EV2 photographs the surface, then applies lubricant to the rotating ring using a grease gun. Back at the beta gimbal assembly, EV1 continues a photo and video survey of the sites where an ISS rollout solar array modification kit will be installed on the future EVA. EV1 returns inboard to the camera port 8 worksite to adjust the cable interfering with movement of the camera light assembly. After lubricating the surface, EV2 installs a new trundle bearing assembly. EV2 then certifies the worksite. EV2 surveys the worksite before replacing the cover. From camera port 8, EV1 translates inboard, down strut, and temp stows the crew lock bag on the U.S. laboratory. EV1 goes to the airlock, retrieves a different crew lock bag, and takes it to the external stowage platform number 2. EV1 retrieves a portable foot restraint and installs it on the robotic arm. Then EV1 ingresses the foot restraint and the robotic arm flies to the radio frequency group aft position. EV2 returns along the truss back to the airlock stowing the large bag outside the airlock and joins EV1 on the stowage platform. The crew work together to fold back the multi-layer insulation surrounding the radio frequency group. At the aft wedge clamps, the crew remove any rubber covering the clamp nuts using needle nose pliers. Then, using a ratchet wrench and a specially designed tool, they loosen the five aft wedge clamps. EV1 is then flown to the forward face of the radio frequency group, releases four structural bolts, then removes it from the stanchion. EV1 then flies it to the airlock, where both crew secure it inside. Back at the stowage platform, EV1 egresses the arm removes the foot restraint and retrieves the earlier temporarily stowed tool bag. 
EV2 secures the covering over the stanchion. Then both crew return to the airlock in ingress. As you can see, it's going to be quite a busy day for our crew members, Mobelli and O'Hara. Taking a look at these team members today, you'll be able to track them while outside the space station by taking a look at one difference on their suits. Today, Jasmine Mobelli will be EV1, wearing red stripes around the legs of her suit. You can't see her right now as they are preparing to don the SAFER, the Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue. There she is. You can see that red stripe also on the top of her suit. Meanwhile, Laura O'Hara will be EV2, or spacewalker number two, and she's wearing an unmarked suit, so no stripes around the legs or top of her suit. As mentioned, the uh, team members inside the Quest airlock right now that are not suited. That's Andy Mogensen on the left of the European Space Agency and Satoshi Furukawa on the right of JAXA, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. And they are helping Mugbelli don her safer. This is the simplified aid for EVA rescue. It's a compressed nitrogen powered backpack of sorts. This would allow a crew member to maneuver independently of the space station. It's primarily intended if a spacewalker became detached from the space station and needed to move back. However, crew members remain tethered at all times and this is a precautionary measure. Today is the fourth all-female spacewalk, the first three being completed by NASA astronauts Christina Cook and Jessica Meir, and the first of those taking place four years ago on October 18th, 2019. We are running ahead of schedule today. Uh, the crew members are about 20 minutes ahead of the timeline. They were intended to start the spacewalk at 7.05 a.m. Central Time. However, we may see that come a little bit early as they continue to step through all of their procedures with help from teams on the ground. So far, most of the action this morning has been taking place in the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock. There are two portions, and in this equipment lock side is where crew members don their suits or put them on. They also conduct the pre-breathe procedures and, of course, as you see now, attach the safer. Once the safer is attached on both crew members, they will move into the crew lock portion. That's the outermost part of the Quest airlock. That's where we'll do final communication and suit systems checks with the ground. And then the spacewalkers will change their suits to internal battery power and start the timer for the spacewalk. Earlier this morning, 
O'Hara and Mogbelli were conducting the pre-breathing exercise. This consists of two phases. In the first, the crew breathes 100% oxygen through a mask to begin purging the nitrogen from their bodies. In the second phase, the crew gets in their spacesuits and conducts something called the in-suit light exercise. It's also known as aisle. This is where they move their arms and legs very slightly just to raise their metabolic rate and metabolic rate and speed up getting rid of that excess nitrogen. These two crew members have been preparing for this spacewalk since prior to their flight to the International Space Station. O'Hara and Mugbelli were able to practice this spacewalk in the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory here at uh, in Houston, Texas. The Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory is a a uh, 40 million gallon pool allowing crew members to put on suits, get into the water and become neutrally buoyant where they can practice different spacewalk tasks on a mock-up of the space station. Since arrival to the International Space Station, they've also been able to review their procedures, talk with teams on the ground, and they've needed to refit their suits in space in case there has been any spinal elongation or fluid shifting that's occurred since they've arrived.
Teams in Mission Control Houston are conducting their handover from the Orbit 1 shift to the Orbit 2, who will lead the spacewalkers through today's uh, procedures. The International Space Station itself is currently flying 265 statute miles over Australia. It's entering an orbital nighttime, and once our crew members get outside today, you'll see a handful of uh, sunrises and sunsets as the space station sees 16 each day. Furukawa and Mogensen are moving Jasmine McBelly into the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock and out of the equipment lock portion. Her uh, safer donning is complete. Meanwhile, they will begin that process on NASA's Laurel O'Hara. You can see her again. She's EV2 numbered uh, today. She is wearing white stripes around the legs of her suit. Uh, in comparison to Jasmine McBelly wearing the red stripes on the outside of her suit, so you'll be able to keep up with who is who once they're outside the space station.
It's now Laurel O'Hara's turn to be assisted with her SAFER, the Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue. Again, McBelly has already moved into the crew lock portion, and we were tracking this spacewalk to start at 7.05 a.m. Central Time. That may occur a little bit earlier now as the crew continues to step through their procedures expeditiously. A reminder again of some of the tasks that the crew members will be working on today. McBelly and O'Hara will exit the Quest airlock to remove an electronics box called the Radio Frequency Group from a communications antenna on the station. This Radio Frequency Group, or RFG as you might hear it called, is from a unit installed in 2021. And it was previously swapped out, the entire unit, by uh, Tom Marshburn and Kayla Barron on US EVA 78. They left the part, of the, the part of the degraded unit on the truss. And earlier this year, Steve Bowen and Sultan Onayadi uh, got part of the unit removed, but not this radio frequency group. They ran into some trouble. So teams here on the ground have been troubleshooting uh, next steps on how to best remove this portion of hardware. They've also developed a special new tool that will be used today, a type of wrench that will help them secure the radio frequency or secure the station on which the radio frequency group is placed and remove the radio frequency group altogether. Additionally, these astronauts will work to remove an H fixture. This is uh, to help install a new International Space Station rollout solar array known as an IROSA in the future. We have installed uh, a handful of these over the last several years. These H fixtures were not initially be, uh, designed to be removed during spacewalks, but we have done so previously. And Laurel O'Hara will take some time to work on a trundle bearing assembly. She will remove the trundle bearing assembly that's part of a solar array rotary joint, also known as a, a SARGE. These trundle bearing assemblies help facilitate the rotation of the solar arrays. And this one specifically is sticky, worn out, and the lube applied over time has worn down. So instead of just servicing it, it's being replaced entirely.
As suit prep continues for today's spacewalk, let's learn a little bit more about the suits themselves. These are known as EMUs, or extravehicular mobility units. They're essentially an individual human-sized spacecraft. They each contain their own portable life support system. There are a lot of options when it comes to these suit sizes. Uh, each space station suit has three sizes of upper torso, eight sizes of adjustable elbows, over 65 sizes of gloves, two sizes of adjustable waists, five of adjustable knees, and a lot of padding options for almost every part of the body to make it fit as desired. When working with a suit sizing engineer on the ground, they take over 80 different body measurements that are plugged in to determine a start size for each modular component of the extravehicular mobility unit. These extravehicular mobility units, or the spacesuits that you see today, have six layers and provide atmospheric containment, thermal insulation, cooling, solar radiation protection, and micrometeoroid or orbital debris protection. So, of course, we mentioned the space station orbits the Earth about 16 times a day. So there are points throughout the spacewalk we will see today when the astronauts are in direct light from the sun. There are other times when they are in complete darkness. So these cooling and thermal units in the suit help regulate their temperature as their environment fluctuates from one extreme to another. It looks like Furukawa and Mogensen are conducting some final checks after attaching the safer to Laurel O'Hara's suit. They will start moving her into the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. Once we get closer to the start time of the spacewalk, they will close the hatch between the crew lock and the equipment lock portion and begin bringing the crew lock portion of Quest down to a vacuum.
Today's spacewalk is being monitored and led by teams here in Mission Control Houston at Johnson Space Center, where the flight director is Elias Mirmo, joined by Capcom William Vu. Spacewalks call for an additional Capcom of sorts known as the Ground IV, who will be relaying procedures to O'Hara and McBelly throughout their spacewalk. So serving as today's Ground IV is an accomplished spacewalker herself, NASA astronaut Anne McLean. Looks like she stepped off console just before we get into the procedures where the crew will begin the depressurization of the Quest airlock. The lead spacewalk officer today is Sandy Fletcher. And today's spacewalk task is Miranda Nelson. Again, this is the Orbit 2 team in Mission Control Houston. This room is monitored uh, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, as astronauts live and work aboard the International Space Station. Station on one from airlock. Go ahead, Andy. We're in step 69. We're ready to uh, close the hatch, go into the crew lock. All right, Andy, we concur. Step 69. Again, both O'Hara and McBelly are in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. They've just received the go to close the hatch between the crew and equipment lock. They'll then start the depressurization process of the crew lock side. 
bringing it down to a vacuum so that the astronauts can open the hatch and start their spacewalk. U.S. spacewalks officially begin when the spacewalkers switch their suits to internal battery power. What you see here are four of the seven crew members currently living aboard the International Space Station. Also aboard are Sergei Prokopiev, As I was mentioning, there are seven people currently living aboard the International Space Station, three who arrived on Soyuz MS-24, one being Laurel O'Hara on today's spacewalk, as well as Oleg Kanonyenko and Nikolai Chub, who are beginning a one-year mission on the International Space Station. Additionally, the uh, crew who arrived on Crew 7 includes Jasmine Mobelli, who is also today's uh, EV-1 lead spacewalker, Andreas Mogensen and of uh, ISA and JAXA's Satoshi Furukawa, as long as as well as Roscosmos cosmonaut Konstantin Borisov.
along with Mabelli, along with Mabelli and O'Hara in the uh, airlock are some of the tools and spare parts they'll be using throughout the day. It looks like EVA ESA's Andy Mogensen is now closing the hatch between the crew and equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock. Now that the hatch is closed, the crew will start stepping through their depressurization procedures. They'll be bringing the airlock pressure down to less than 0.5 pounds per square inch, as close to vacuum as possible in preparation for opening the hatch and exposing themselves to the vacuum of space. Houston Station on one from Airlock. Go ahead, Andy. At step 76 and 77 are complete. Copy, Andy. 78 has been complete by ground, 79 in work by ground. Copy. EV crew, Houston, good morning, Jaws and Laurel. Just a heads up, uh, we're working on getting you a hot mic. We're not quite there yet, though. Once the crew members are hot mic'd, we'll hear a lot more chatter between them and teams here on the ground, specifically Capcom, uh, or sorry, Ground IV, NASA astronaut, and McLean, who will be relaying the procedures from the ground to the crew members and working with them on any troubleshooting. EV crew Houston, you are not hot mic. So thanks for configuring it. Okay, hot mic, hot mic. I guess we should say good morning. Yeah. Houston Station, I'm on the airlock. I see 81 is already done.
copy step 81 complete. As we prepare to get started with today's spacewalk, we are in a satellite handover. These are tracked as our tracking data in relay satellite systems uh, transition from one to the next. The LED is on. As you can hear, we do still have audio communication with the crew. On one, we're having a hard time hearing you there. Copy Alpha. Clearly, we are just waiting for your go in step 84. All right, Andy, we can give you a go for step 84, crew lock, deep rescue card. Copy. We are moving on to the crew lock, deep rescue card. Now with the hatch closed, the now with the hatch closed, the uh, flight control team here in Mission Control Houston has given crew members Andy Mogensen and Satoshi Furukawa the opportunity to begin depressurization of the crew lock portion, where O'Hara and Mugbelli are inside and preparing for the spacewalk. Depressurization of the crew lock has begun. The atmospheric pressure we're used to on Earth is about 14.7 psi. At six decimal zero, you can expect an alert tone. Copy, copy. And Laura, when we get to five psi, then you can switch the depressed pump and ISO valve to closed. Copy. That pressure now falling. I'm showing airlock T at 12 decimal 5, and my hit gauge is right at 4. Pressure in the crew lock portion now about 12 pounds per square inch. Again, the space station is kept with what we're used to on Earth, about 14.7 psi. Meanwhile, the suit pressure is about 4.3 pounds per square inch. That low pressure in the space suit allows a lot more flexibility, which is uh, critical when flexing these gloves for about a six and a half hour spacewalk. That 4.3 PSI is close to what you'd experience if you were at about 30,000 feet elevation.
hear the release valve. I can hear it. Copy. And it's stable right at five. Same. On airlock T, 10 decimal five. I see the same. And don't forget to uh, drink a little out of your dip beef while be pressing. I am. I just wanted to say dip beef. Because we have limited resources on board when it comes to nitrogen and oxygen, this uh, excess nitrogen and oxygen that's inside the crew lock portion is pumped into the rest of the space station rather than being vented overboard. Once the crew comes back from their spacewalk today, it will be repressurized with that nitrogen and oxygen that's inside the uh, main space station area. Crew lock is now under 10 pounds per square inch of pressure, approaching 9. Once we get down to five pounds per square inch in the airlock, we will pause for a systems check and then resume depressurization to about, uh, to less than 0.5 pounds per square inch. And I just got the alert for O2 position IV. Say that 
that again? Oh, I got an alarm and no two position ID. Yeah. Depressurization continues in a crew lock. Now under seven pounds per square inch. Decimal one, copy. Decimal zero, okay. Hey, press pump man, ISO valve is closed. Copy. The D-Press pump man ISO valve is closed. Now on your DCM, you can switch your display status until leak check question mark is displayed. And then press along, yes, two seconds. And once you have a selected yes, long two second hold, then follow the displayed instructions and we'll do a leak check. Okay, I've got leak check complete, and I'm setting my O2 actuator to UEA. Okay, I see the same. Copy, two good leak checks. Um, when we're done, check it, your O2 actuator is an EBA. Stand by. 
same work. Yep. As you heard, the crew lock depressurization continues. That depressurization holds at about five pounds per square inch. Again, we heard two good suit leak checks. Shortly, we'll hear the uh, depressurization resume, again, bringing it as close to a vacuum as possible. Okay, O2 actuator EVA for EV1. Copy, O2 actuator EVA for both EV1 and EV2. So Laurel, you can take your, uh, you can take the deep breath pump fan ISO valve to open and you'll expect an alert tone. Copy. Press pump fan ISO valve is open. Copy, I will open the emergency MPEV out here and then monitor your suit P gauge is less than 5.5. .5. If it's more than 5.5, .5, uh, we'll stop depress by closing the man uh, ISO valve and let me know as well so I can close the emergency MPEV. Copy. Depressurization has resumed, now falling below that five pounds per square inch now, mark. When the crew lock is at two PSI, then you can close the depress pump man ISO valve. The crew lock is now under three pounds per square inch. Again, bringing that down to a vacuum. Everything continues to go smoothly this morning for NASA astronauts Laurel O'Hara and Jasmine McBelly as they prepare for their first spacewalk.
Laurel T 2.0, copy. Press pump, man, ISO valve is closed. Copy, Laurel D, press pump, man, ISO valve is closed. Now you can switch depress pump power to off, OFF. Pump power is off. Copy, now you can report your initial tether configuration to ground IV. Okay, Laurel, I can get your uh, waste tether. Uh, let's see which one of it. That's the extra. Okay, this one. Okay, I've got it. Take close hook lock, black on black on the airlock D ring extender. Okay, and I've got small hook on my right waist, on my right D ring extender, gate close lock, black on black. I have my safety tether hook, gate close, black lock, black on black, going to my red reel. Copy. And I slide up here. Red reel is unlocked. The large hook of my red reel is going to my green reel. It closed locked black on black. Okay. The small hook of the green reel is on the red reel. It closed locked black on black. Okay, and I can get it from there. I see your anchor hook. It closed hook lock black on black. My waist tether. A close hook block, black on black. That waist tether goes to my right D ring extender, and that is a close hook lock, black on black. Okay, and from my left side, let me get my safety tether. Okay, so my Red hook is on my left D-ring extender, eight close hook lock, black on black. My red reel is unlocked. The green hook is attached. It is unlocked as well. My yellow hook is going to my green reel. That is gate close hook lock, black on black. The green reel is unlocked and I have the anchor hook on my mini workstation. And that should be it. You can also call my waist tether if you'd like. On the left side, go to my left earring extender, gate close to black, black on black, and uh, yep, that's it. TV crew, Houston, good tether config. Copy. Jaws and Laurel, just for awareness, we're now waiting for the uh, crew lock to depress completely. We'll let you know when uh, the pressure is less than half a PSI. Copy. Oh, I might need to come port a bit. Okay. Um, Nader or Zenith? Um, I can stay up here, I think. Yeah, now I have okay. access to the latch. That should be good. As you heard, O'Hara and McBelly are stepping through some checks of uh, their suits and tethers. Again, 
Depressurization of the crew lock continues now at about 1.4 PSI or pounds per square inch. Again, we want to bring that down to as close to a vacuum as possible in preparation for hatch opening. And this view of the two team members who helped them suit up today. Closest to the camera is JAXA, or Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Satoshi Furukawa. And down in the uh, center of the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock is Commander ESA astronaut uh, Andy Mogensen. Mogensen is also prime for uh, maneuvering the Canada Arm 2 today, which McBelly will use later in the spacewalk. Pressurization in the crew lock continues to decrease now about one pound per square inch. The rate is as planned. It gets a little bit slower as we get closer to vacuum.
pressure in the crew lock now under one pound per square inch. Again, we're working to bring that down to less than 0.5 pounds per square inch ahead of opening the airlock. And a reminder, our spacewalkers today, EV-1, the lead spacewalker, is NASA astronaut Jasmine Mungbelli. She'll have red stripes around her spacesuit. And Laurel O'Hara is EV-2, who will have white stripes, or essentially an unmarked suit. It's the first spacewalk for both crew members. And my Sam is black. Over there, John Royal. Happy. The hat shows about point six. Depressurization continues. Uh, we are now getting close to the mark of 0.5 pounds per square inch.
EB Crew Houston, just giving you a heads up on an expected message. In about a minute from now, you should see a suit E high message. No action for you. You can pro through the message. Copy. Okay. Houston station on, uh, or from Airlock on Space Ground 1, we show on the PTS, Kulak pressure less than 26 millimeters mercury. Hey, Andy, we copy and concur. I'm showing point four on the gauge. Excellent. Uh, with those two things, Jaws, you are go to open and stow the EV hatch. Copy. Good work. Now that depressurization is complete, the crew has a go to open the hatch. Again, right on the timeline today, they were anticipated to start this spacewalk around 7.05 a.m. Central Time. This live view coming from outside the International Space Station looking directly at the Quest airlock. The airlock itself is uh, close to the top right of this structure. We won't see the airlock hatch itself open as that opens inwards. However, you will see the thermal cover open that protects the airlock hatch underneath. And as a reminder, U.S. spacewalks officially begin when the crew receives a go to transition their suits to internal battery power. Another tracking data and relay satellite system handover as we prepare to start today's spacewalk. Okay, hatch is open and on the hatch keep. Copy. And the emergency MPEV is closed. So at this point, 
I wish you a good EVA, and I'll hand you all over to Ground IV for post depress. Thanks, Andy. Copy, thanks, Andy. Be on the back side. Good morning, Jaws and Laurel. How do you hear? TV1 has you loud and clear. Good morning. Two has you loud and clear. Good morning, Ann. Excellent. Let's get this thing going. On your DCM, you can switch your powers to bat, stagger your switch throws, and expect the warning tone. Okay, EV1. Switch job. I'm good. Okay, we copy and we copy that uh, message, Laurel. You can switch your display to Pro to verify functional display. V1, functional display. AV2, functional display. Copy, Laurel, on the UIA. Switch power EV1 and 2 to off OFF and check that all four LEDs are off OFF. Okay, Andy, power to EV1 and power to EV2 are both off. All LEDs are off. And I got the H2O is off message accepted. All right, we copy. For both, you can. Disconnect your SCUs from your DCM, install your DCM cover, and stow the SCU in the pouches. When you install those in the pouches, please make sure they're securely in the pouches and that Velcro is closed. We don't want them flying out. Copy. Copy. Communications here on the ground has now been handed over to NASA astronaut Ann McLean to work with our spacewalkers. The spacewalk today beginning right on time at 7.05 a.m. Central. And is it normal for my mine uh, to spray it out some water that then grows <laughs> on my uh, helmet bubble? EV1. Okay, for Jazz, um, your Vox is kind of coming up. in and out. Can Copy. you clarify that last call? Yeah, I was just saying when I get connected, I don't know if this is expected or not, but sprayed out some water that uh, froze and sprayed on my helmet bubble. No, no issue. Okay, and we understand that that was and, from the uh, SCU. And DCM, or is SCU is stowed in the pouch. Hi, Abram. And for EV1, SCU is stowed in the pouch and DCM cover is installed. Okay, we understand both SCUs are stowed in the pouches. And, John, can you just confirm that those water droplets were from the SCU? Abram. They were from the SCU. Okay, copy. For Laurel, check that the deep press pump man ISO valve is closed. Press pump man ISO valve is closed. Copy. For both of you, take your temperature control valve to max hot, which is lowest numbers. TV1, TV is max hot. TV2, TV is max hot. Copy. For both crew, you can switch your water to on, O-N. TV1, water switch on. TV2, water switch on. Copy for both. Check that your DCM is blank and your byte is off OFF. You on blank and byte off. AB2 blank and byte off. 
At this time, you can set your temperature control valves as desired, and please report to us uh, the number that you are going to start with. And just a reminder that anytime you change it, please give us a call and let us know. Copy. If you one, you see the set to four. And EV2, TPD set to four. Copy, we have both suits at four. Uh, report your suit P gauge. EV1, suit P gauge, four decimal two. EV2, suit P gauge, four decimal four. Copy, we have good numbers and stand by while I check the last two steps. Copy. All right, doing one last check with my config. You heard some comms from uh, NASA astronaut Jasmine Mobelli. The uh, depressed cue card at this time, uh, Jaws, you are go to open the thermal cover. You're going to release the hook from the D-ring and attach it to that tether point and cinch the strap until snug, verifying six lines visible. Happy and work. McBelly noticed some droplets coming from her service and cooling umbilical known as the SCU. Again, the team here on the ground confirmed that was no issue. They've made it through the rest of their checklist. Three, four, five, six lines visible. Thermal cover is coming open. Wow. <laughs> we copy the six lines visible, visible and uh, you're about 13 minutes to a sunset. So you're coming out during day, which is probably painfully obvious to you. And you are go to egress the airlock, and JAWS, your first step is going to be to attach your anchor hook to the aft external D-ring. That it works. So will we go sun visors down here? Um, I have mine up, and it's fine right now. Okay. Yeah, you're only about 12 minutes from a sunset, so it, uh, it's going to get a little dusky. Um, for Laurel, as uh, JAWS works the tethers, your first step is going to be to hand out crew lock bag T, Papa, and a reminder that in this initial, as we hand out these initial bags, the large smalls are going to stay okay. in the airlock. Okay, my safety tether is on the aft D-ring extender, gate closed, hook lock, block on block. Copy, your anchor is on the aft external D-ring. You can attach Laurel's anchor, EV2's anchor, to the forward external D-ring. It worked. NASA astronaut Jasmine Mogbelli is the first out of the hatch this morning. Again, she is EV1 today. You can tell because she's got red stripes around the legs of her spacesuit. Meanwhile, EV2, Laurel O'Hara, will have no stripes on her spacesuit. Okay, Laurel, yours is attached to the forward E-ring, gate closed, hook lock, black on black. Copy, so JAWS can give Laurel the go to release your waist tether from the airlock D-ring extender whenever you'd like, and we'll work on getting crew lock bag T out to JAWS and on your BRT. I will leave it on there for now. Um, and Jaws, I'm ready to pass to our bag piece. Okay. Wherever you are. Okay. 
okay? If you can the handle towards me. Okay, my VRT red is on there. Okay. Bring it back in a little bit. Okay, the airlock red is off. Copy. And I'm putting that red on the airlock C ring extender. Okay, that is on my BRT. Okay, we copy jobs that that's on your BRT. And while you're working on that, I'm going to take and just getting it in a good position. All right, and I'm going to take my waist tether hook and just clear a quick wrap on my, with my safety tether. Just taking it off, and I'm back on the airlock to re extender. Tethers are clear. Copy. And Laurel, the next thing will be to pass the large ORU bag out to JAWS, and that large small will also be stowed on the airlock D ray extender. Copy. Bye, Laurel. Okay, your tether is clear of mine. Oh, sorry. Okay, Laurel, I have it. Okay. And, yep. But I don't. I do not have a ret yet. Happy. Just a reminder: if he could not ret to the handrail, or ret to one of those D rings, if he can. Happy. We are about 30 seconds from a handover, uh, so we'll just get work to get the ORU bag out, and then when ready, uh, Laurel can egress. Happy. Happy. Hey, Josh, it's a teaser. There's, you can use that large bag. And to put it back on your mini workstation. Oh, um, so. As expected, we are in another satellite handover. We expect to regain communications with the astronauts very shortly. The spacewalk began on time this morning, right at 7.05 a.m. Central Time. The hatches have been opened. NASA astronaut Jasmine Mobili is outside the hatch. Copy, let me just clear the stack. Copy. Okay, I am clear of you, Laurel. All right, E2 is egressing. You look good. Stopping to pick up my waist feather hook. Copy. At that, on my mini workstation. Copy. You look good. I can't see your left side as well, but your right side is clear. If you keep hitting a little, uh, I think there might be, I was on your uh, seat other. Oh, okay. You know what? Coming up shortly, both crew members will turn on their helmet cameras. These will give us a view from their perspective throughout the day. Me too, egress. Okay, and as we're coming out, I see your three tabs up and your left paper handle down. Okay. My waist tether on the 
That's your handrail. Copy. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me know when you're ready for the bag. And we did copy those buddy checks, and we see you both out of the airlock. Welcome to space. Uh, thanks, ma'am. Pretty incredible. <laughs> Blowing my mind. I can see our dragon. Thanks. Working on the BRT. Okay. And um, let me pass the handrail side to you. That's NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara at the top of the screen. And the International Space Station now flying 267 statute miles over the Indian Ocean, coming up on the southwest coast of Australia. Okay. Let me know when you're good for me to release. What? I'm a little closer. Hey, I've got my DRT red on. Okay. okay. Okay, I've got the bag when you're ready. Okay. I've got the, my DRT cells on the TBA bag. Okay. It take me a second to get it here. Yeah, so yeah, for this time. Let me know if you need any help. And Jaws, uh, if you're not actively assisting, you can turn on your HECA. Copy. HECA is on, I see a green LED. Copy. Want it close to me. Oh, that was looking pretty good. Okay, yeah, it's like right along your leg. I think that's really good. Okay. I think, uh, I think that's about as good as it's going to get. It looks really good. Yeah, we concur. And uh, when we do translation adaptation, uh, if you need to reposition it, uh, we can definitely take the time to do that. So, uh, Laurel, if you could turn on your HECA. Uh. And I don't remember which paper handle I called for you before, Laurel, but now I see your right one. So well, let's get our lights on. Our lights are coming on. Yeah, I've got mine on. Okay. 
And I see two green LEDs for you. And, uh, okay, so I already got the three tabs. So your right paper handles down. Your left, yes, yeah, lights are good. And if you can rotate so I can see your left side. I can't quite see it. At least. But, uh, yeah, it is. Can we give it a little bump just to make sure it's fully down? We're a little further off right there. Sit down. Touch down. Yeah, I think so. Let me pick another kit. If you can rotate a tiny bit, just y'all. Yeah, it's down. Okay. All right, there's Buddy checks on Laurel, and we'll take uh, Jaws. All right, I got four lights on. The good green echo lights. Happy. Um, here. Got one tab up on your left side. Let me see your BRT tab. Like right in front of my. Okay, I see your BRT tab up. If the handle on the left is down, right side. And yeah. it, right side, I have one more tab up, so three tabs up. And. The PPP is blocking your other safer handle right now. Okay. And further or yeah. And I see that handle down. Okay. So there's both the safer handles down. Hey, let's take a good look at our tools and tethers. Yeah. You turn around here. Good call. Yeah, we'll uh, double check all those tools, oh, tethers, and a good config and a baseline hap for both. Copy. Okay, my hap is dry. Hap is dry. I see my safety tether, you're totally being conflicted from each other. Yep, I see my safety tethers with a good config. Okay. Look. This bag looks up. good. It looks good. It is flopping, but that's mine. <clears throat> I think we'll just have to turn to it quite a bit. Yeah. But the, the position looks good there. Okay. Okay, get tools and tethers. Happy and a baseline hat for both of you. Maybe one dry hat. A two dry hat. Kathy, you go to close the thermal cover, and after the thermal cover is closed, the next step will be translation adaptation, and we can take our time uh, as long as you need there. Copy. Copy. The crew members are closing the thermal cover. Again, this is not the airlock hatch that opens inside. Happy. We see the thermal cover closed. Uh, at this time, if you'd like, um, we can perform translation adaptation in place, recommending, uh, uh, just like we do in the NBL, um, some rotation, pitch yaws and rolls, various hand grips, and uh, attaching your local tether and okay. releasing hands. So you can take your time with that and just let us know when you're ready to proceed. Probably the best way out you've ever had. We heard some communications between uh, O'Hara and Mungbelli as they were checking each other, uh, their tethers, their tools, making sure their helmet cameras were on, which we'll start getting views of shortly. Additionally, they performed a HAP check, that stands for Helmet Absorption Pad, just to make sure there's no excess fluid in the suit. You'll hear that periodically throughout the day, as well as a glove check to make sure that their gloves are in good condition as they maneuver around the space station. 
Again, this is the first spacewalk for Mabelli and O'Hara, so they are performing some translation ad adaptation, getting used to this uh, zero-G environment where they're outside the space station. We also saw some lighting change because we are now in an orbital nighttime. Uh, we will see a sunrise or a sunset approximately every 45 minutes. And the crew members also turned on the helmet lights. That, may, that way they can more easily see as they maneuver outside the space station. I said, all right. You good? I'm good. I'm good. All right, we're all good then. Um, so we can begin our translation. Uh, reminder that Laurel, you're going to lead out to the Green Hook location, and Jaws, you're going to head up to the Starboard Airlock Toolbox. And just a reminder um, about MMOD strikes on face one, so we don't want to slide uh, gloves on the back of the handrails and uh, avoid inadvertent contact with the tusk cables on the Zenith and Nader CETA rails. And then we're gonna avoid translation on that bent over brake handle on the starboard CETA cart. Copy, copy. Okay, uh, EV2, I'm looking at my face tether and starting translation. Copy, I'll be behind you, I'll watch your tether. Okay. It's my big bag. Yeah. I'm watching it. Okay, I'm on the feeder rail. I see you. I'm coming over your tether. I'm clear. My tethers are clear. Hey, Fern, you look good. And Jaws, you're heading to that starboard airlock toolbox and opening up the Zenith door. Happy I'm on the starboard one and Zenith door in work. And Laurel, as you uh, head out to the Green Hook location, mile marker 9180 is what you're looking for below the FHRC, and reminder not to fare lead before you get there. Okay, hey, I'm up on the feeder rail. Happy Laurel. Okay, and that door is open. Copy. You can attach an AET to the bolt puller, and then you'll be releasing those locking tabs uh, to retrieve it. Copy. And I see my safety tether is hung up on some MLI. That is just part of the seat for it looks like. Copy well, let me know if you need any help. I am going to use full pillar, so I'll be up there momentarily. Can we copy that, Laurel? 
Well, it's down. Okay. It's the uh, kind of down towards at uh, the bottom. I didn't translate past that, so let's see if I can go back and do that. He's just translating backwards. Okay, we got you, Laurel. And for Jaws, uh, we see you got the toolbox door closed, and we're going to be stowing that bolt puller on the toolbox as you are doing. It's stowed. And then you'll be following Laurel. And I've released my rut from it. Okay, copy. It work. Okay, I see my tether clear. I'm heading back outboard. Bag is spinning behind me. Better. And Josh, can you give us a confirmation that the door latch is closed? Both uh, door latches are closed. Thank you much. And for both of you, uh, in nighttime, um, just a reminder that your helmet lights have uh, the three settings off spotlight and floodlight, so if you're not getting the light that you want, um, you can twist those helmet lights uh, or try hitting the button uh, to get a different amount of light. Copy. Copy. Okay, I see Laurel's tether. Okay. Trying to come up. Okay, I'm clear of your tether. I'm coming off the seat of fur. Okay, I can see my tether too. Copy. I'm under the MT on the other side. Copy the rail, headed outboard. I'm coming up on the starboard cedar rail here in a moment. How's the MT today? I say easier than the MBL. Hi. Yeah. Good news. Yeah. Problem. Laurel O'Hara and Jasmine McBelly have begun their translation out to their first work sites of the day. They will be split up on these first tasks. McBelly is heading out to work on the H fixture. I'm at mile marker 8760. TBA bag is off, off to my left. Copy. I'm coming up on the port seat cart. As McBelly works on the 2AH fixture, O'Hara will be working on the trundle bearing assembly removal and replacement. I'm at the FHRC. Okay. All right, Laurel. And that's, uh, this is where we're dropping our green hearts. That's right. The okay. handrail that your right hand is on is 3652. That's JAWS. Uh, hook location and 3651 is just to your right. It's the uh, Nader Zenith one that you have in your right hand, and you can uh, put your green hook there. Okay, I'm past the port to the cart. Copy.
Okay, I have my indefector on. And effector is on my green rail, and I'm moving my green hook over to structure. Up below, and I'm coming up on your left. Uh, is my foot caught on your tether at all? When I, the, no, whenever you get a chance, it's more rough. Okay. All right, I've got my green hose on the Venus side of 3651. My large red hook is locked, still locked, on the green rail. There we go. I'm, I'm stuck from your tether. Can we copy Laurel? Good check. Uh, okay. Whenever you're ready, you can have it. Continue translation outboard uh, to the port Sarge. Am I on it again? My foot, uh, your right foot is touching it, but you're otherwise clear. Okay, Captain. I'm going to come up again. Yep, I'm going to hold here. Okay. And how's my bag look? Your bag, stand by. Your bag looks really good. I'm right along your side. Okay. Heading outboard. Copy. All right, and Laurel. Uh, okay, Ann, and I'm at. Six. Yep, Jazz, we got you at the Green Hook okay. location. 3652 is your handrail, that little guy right above Laurel. And for Laurel, um, as you translate outboard, make sure your gauntlets are in place. Uh, that face one handrail that you're on is going to end at about mile marker 10320, 10, and that kind of leads you right into your work site. Ten zero five zero. Okay. And at ten three five zero. All right, we see you at the work site, Laurel. My gauntlets are in place. Copy. Um, your first task is going to be to stow that large ORU bag. Uh, you remember we kind of recommend cover one. So just to orient you, um, right in front of you is cover two uh, with TBA7. That's the one you'll be accessing. You've got that two and a half foot reach that you asked about uh, over to your right side, to the outboard side, and that's where you'll find the short handrail 3864, the long handrail 3865. Uh, so you can get oriented, recommended feet outboard, but if you see something else that you prefer, let us know. And you can get that load, large ORU bag stowed on top of cover one. Uh, there is the tether point on cover one, and we recommend the zenith side of 3865. Laurel O'Hara has arrived at her work site and has been given the green light to retrieve an ORU bag that stands for Orbital Replacement Unit. She'll be working on the port side of the station on a trundle bearing assembly. Again, this is one of 13 trundle bearing assemblies for each solar array rotary joint and may help facilitate the rotation of the solar arrays. Get 
Yep, and a reminder, Laurel, you do have um, the setup steps and a diagram of that work site in your CUF pages one and two if you need it. Okay. Okay, my green hook is on hand roll 3652. Okay, we copy a green handle on 3652. So you're also gonna be heading outboard. You're gonna head Zenith when you get to mile marker 9540. That'll be the stanchion on face one with a label of 16 on it. And you'll head up to the Zenith side. Copy, I'm just gonna make sure I'm conflicted here from Laurel's tether. My I could drop around it right now. Yep, and I'll try to point out the get ahead site as you go by them. The first one that you're passing by is that FHRC right there. Let's say again? Yeah, just letting you know that that FHRC that you're at uh, where you dropped your green hooks is one of the uh, get ahead sites. Should we should we come back to it? Oh, uh, yes, for the stress copy. Jasmine Mbele continues toward her work site. We have a view from her helmet camera on the left, and Laurel O'Hara, who has arrived at her first work site today, on the right. Hey, I'm continuing outboard. Copy. All right, we copy, and you'll be uh, taking a left turn at 95.40 mile marker. Ninety-five forty. I've got uh, one of the large, small adjustables down on the expansion of 3865, or on 3865. Okay, we copy. Um, and I've got my BS. Yep, and just have you ever you need to position that bag so that the opening is towards you on cover two. And for Jaws, I think you just put your left hand on it, uh, yeah. but you're going for uh, handrail 3681 uh, for your adjustable fair lead. Copy. And if you want to take a look up, uh, you'll see CPA. Uh, you will be back to this spot. I will. Uh, I see it. And so the other, there's a tether point, let's see, uh, on the top of the cover, and so I'll drop this starboard, uh, a large, small adjustable on the cover one tether point. Okay, copy. Yep, um, that looks good. Yeah, and all the covers have those tether points in the same uh, location, so basically zenith and inboard. And Jaws, as you're putting uh, your adjustable tether fairly down, um, reminder that when we come back, we're gonna be temp stowing the crew lock bag, either on the handrail that you're on, or the one to your right, which is 3802, or the one right above you, so you can kind of recon that area. Copy. I've got the bag tied down in two spaces. All right, copy, Laurel. So uh, you're going to open that large ORU bag whenever you're in a good position um, and position the TBA bag bundle near the opening. And at any point uh, for some stability, if you put your feet outboard, we think of uh, that 3865 or 3864 are good BRT locations. Copy. That is my plan.
And Laurel, as you scout out uh, your best body position, uh, just a reminder, you want to be able to reach back and forth into the bag, and you want to verify reach to all of the all six of the uh, bolts on that cover, and uh, you'll want access to your small trash bag as well. As both crew members get set up at their work sites, we heard a call from Ground IV and McLean, also a NASA astronaut, up to NASA's Laurel O'Hara, who is at her work site where she will be removing a trundle bearing assembly. The first step is to release six bolts from the solar array rotary joint okay, cover. Uh, our rich man fairly is down. All right, copy. You are go to translate, uh, continue your translation outboard, uh, checking that your gauntlets are in place, and you're going to cross over the Sarge just uh, zenith of Laurel. Copy. Let me get my VIT back to a good config first. Okay, my gauntlets are down, continuing outboard. Copy, your okay. gauntlets are down. Um, when you head outboard just before you cross the Sarge, you're going to see uh, handrail 3866. Uh, that's how you know you're crossing at the right spot. And then when you get out to the P4, the radiator is pointed forward, and you're going to be above that. Um, and you're going to look for the handrail pass that starts with, at WIF 3 and WIF 7. So you're going to cross from 3866 handrail over toward WIF 3 and WIF 7. 3866 over WIF 3 to WIF 7. Good read back. I'm Laurel, I see you. Um, so I started to get set up, but my safety tether is uh, definitely pulling me back to see a lot, so I'm going to set up a fair lead here, um, probably on the edge of 38.64. Okay, we copy, Laurel. There's also um, a little bit of some structure, just kind of right over, over one, but I think the bag isn't really going to sit on top of cover one, like we talking about, um, I think it will be just kind of flopping around there. And you can uh, you can tack that down with uh, extra ret or cinch the straps down as needed, uh, or reposition wherever uh, wherever you think you can get okay. it so you can access it. Okay, copy. Okay, and I'm at 5138, I'll put a poor man's in here. Copy, uh, 5138 for the poor man, and as you know, you'll move uh, Nader after that. And uh, as you head it out, you pass by the P44A IEA, which is uh, also one of the potential get-ahead sites. Copy. Copy. 
this, I'm just going to hook that one end of the adjustable on handrail 3864, and I'm going to put the other on the safety side of the reel. Okay, we copy, Laurel. Let go. Fairlead on 5138. Copy your fair lead. Uh, you're going to move Nader uh, looking for 5208. Copy. And 5208 might be a good uh, spot to change your body orientation to be looking toward the mass canister, and then we'll be translating onto the mass canister. That fairly helps a lot. Copy, good news, Laurel. Yeah, we were wondering how much that was going to pull. Yeah, it's kind of pulled me into the large stretch of the sphere. And as you get set up, uh, this is where it's uh, your choice. If you'd like to relocate your PGT ret from your swing arm uh, toward the large ORU bag, um, just to help in temp sewing in between uses. Okay. Jazz, as you get to the mass canister, reminder, um, we want to move very slowly on the mass canister so as not to impart loads and motions, maintaining that less than two and a half uh, seconds per foot, no cyclic loading, and then uh, no kind of lateral loading on the BGA. As you head uh, toward the mass canister, that small handrail uh, that you're going to be in between the uh, two boxes, it looks like you're already up there, 5174 is the long handrail on the side of the mass canister, and that's where you're aiming. Okay. I'm in position and I'll work on sewing my bag. Yep, we see you there. And a reminder to keep your BRT ret attached to the bag. I always move slowly. Ah, thank you. I did not remember that, so that was a good reminder. And we recommend this one go to the middle stanchion. Copy middle stanchion. And as long as you have your hands on the bag, you're also going to be accessing an AET from that crew lock bag to the H picture. It burns up there. It's still on top where I put it. See? Okay, that bag is stowed on the middle stanchion. Copy. Oh, I see the sun coming up. I can see it too. I like it. I've got my thumb visor down. That's a good idea. And I'm also going to adjust my TCB to from four to five. Okay, we copy that was Jaws from four to five. That was sorry, Laurel from four to five. Copy Laurel from four to five, thanks.
Just shy of an hour into today's spacewalk, both crew members working on their first tasks. They did note that we do have a sunrise aboard the International okay, Space Station. TCV is set to five as well. Copy EV1, uh, TCV to five. And as they begin these tasks, the space station is flying 262 statute miles over the border from uh, Canada just over into Montana. For EV2, I've got a PGC now stowed the bag. And I'm just going to get into a little bit better of a body position and then I'll be ready for some bolts. Okay, copy Laurel. And I'm just going to read you the uh, warning caution uh, for these bolts while you get into position. Uh, and just a reminder, these are the very touchy Fairchild fasteners. Um, so we want to align the PGT socket as best as possible and minimize side loading and apply downward pressure while we um, manipulate them and drive the PGT uh, only to the turn count. Happy. Look at that, still on top. Now, am I leaving that adjustable connected to the integral rest? To, to the back. Checking. Uh, and when we check on that, the uh, just so you know, you guys are one hour in. Um, you're on or just slightly behind timeline, uh, but catching up, and we're happy with your work sites. Limiting consumable battery EV2. Happy, thanks, Ben. Happy. And Jaws, that, uh, that adjustable can go either to the handrail or back to the crew lock peg. And we're okay. about um, 20 seconds from a handover. So Jaws, you'll be um, getting in a good position and accessing your PGT and preparing your small trash bag. Copy. And just before the handover started, you had a view of NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara's uh, camera on the right side of your screen. They have both arrived at their work sites. They will also both be using a PGT, that's a pistol grip tool, sort of like a drill, specially designed for use on the outside of the International Space Station. Again, they are both working on a removal as their first task. Jasmine Mugbelli will be working to remove an H fixture in preparation for a future new solar array to be installed. And NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara. Oh, good. Bye. Trying to get my DRT into a good position. I'm doing the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not as straightforward as I. We do have comms with the crew members as O'Hara uh, prepares to remove a trundle bearing assembly. Okay, and I don't know if we're back with you, but my trash bag is ready. And I'm ready for PGT settings. All right, copy. We are back with you on voice, uh, still waiting on video. Um, 
Uh, just a reminder that we're going to have the Bravo 7 uh, setting, so Bravo 7 counter 1, and a warning that the B7 um, torque setting may cause bolt failure. So we really want to make sure that we don't have uh, any side loads on that H fixture or on the bolts. Um, and then the same notes I just gave floral, just making sure that your PGT is fully installed, uh, and then you're applying a little bit of downward pressure and drive only to turn count. Copy it, and I have a good cow. Copy good cow, uh, so Bravo 7 counter 1. And for both of you, since we're going to be working bolt ops at the same time, when you call down uh, turns and torques, if you wouldn't mind just clarifying who is calling. Copy, we'll do. Bravo 7 is set, counter 1. Copy, Jaws. Uh, so Bravo 7 counter 1. Jaws. Yep, for Jaws, um, you're going to release the H fixture bolts exactly one turn, and you can do any order. On the left is Jasmine Mobelli's helmet camera. You can see the H fixture at the bottom of your screen. She's going to use the pistol grip tool to release four bolts. I'm moving my PDT back to my swing arm bag. It's getting uh, caught up with the TV bag. Uh, I've got that complete. Okay, we copy, Laurel. Got my PDT. PDT on. After the four bolts are released on this H fixture, McBelly should be able to remove it with uh, by holding a tether point. Okay, we copy Laurel. For Laurel, your settings are alpha four, counter two. And a reminder on the bolt nomenclature, it looks like you're heading toward the right one, so the farthest away from you and to the right is alpha one. Okay, and I've got alpha, counter two set. Alpha four, counter two set. Okay, so for these ones, we're gonna do be doing bolts one B and one A. Those are the two next to the tether point that you're at. Um, exactly eight turns. Eight turns on big alpha one, the bolt closest to the tether point and private inboard. Copy alpha one bolt eight turns and you're go for one B. And it looks like it popped up. Okay, we understand bolt popped out. That's one. great news. Thanks. And that's um, alpha two bolt popped out. Okay, we understand both those bolts by the tether point are popped out. That's great. So we do not need to release those more by hand. Uh, you're now going to install a RET uh, from your mini workstation to the tether point. And we recommend installing the other hand on 3864 or another location if uh, you recommend a different one. 
Okay, from EV1, bolt one, release to one turn. Copy for JAWS, bolt one, one turn. Three, release one turn from Jaws. Happy H fixture bolt three, release one turn. And EV2 has a ret to the cover. Copy the ret to the cover, and the other end of the ret is that, where's that base at? I'm anywhere, oh, it's still on my mini workstation, but uh, I will move it. Okay, yeah, sorry, uh, 3864 okay. or another location if you'd rather have that send in somewhere else. Copy. If you want, bolt two released, one turn. Bolt two, one turn for the H picture. Bolt four released, one turn. Copy bolt four, so we have one turn on all of the H fixture bolts, uh, nicely done. Um, a reminder for the next steps that the bolts will pop out when they're fully released. And uh, same reminder on these Fairchild fasteners that the spring can protrude and create a sharp edge concern. Um, and that the H fixture can kind of self-release from the GSC pad due to stored energy. So you can reset your PGT jaws to alpha six. I hope so. <laughs> we do too. Uh, you can reset your PGT to Alpha 6. Reset to Alpha 6. Counter 1. Alpha 6, Counter 1 is set. You are go to release the H fixture bolts, Jaws, in any order, exactly 11 turns. Copy, exactly 11 turns. Jasmine Mobelli, uh, whose camera view you see here, you can watch her fully remove all four of those H fixture bolts. Meanwhile, NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara is working to. Okay, we copy cover two is redded. Um, so for Laurel, um, you can just verify that your. Uh, PGT is Alpha 4, Counter 2, and we're going to release the surge cover bolts, uh, the remaining uh, 2A, 2B, 3A, and 3B, and these are the ones that are inboard uh, right next to each other. Alphas are farthest away from you. Bravos are kind of the next ones in. You can go any order, exactly eight turns. Uh, the bolt will pop out uh, when it is released, but we're looking for exactly eight turns for Laurel. Copy, eight turn, any order. I've got alpha four, counter two. Copy. Okay, and from JAWS, uh, bolt one is released 11 turns. And I have a question. So it seems like it popped out probably around eight or nine turns, but you still want me to go to 11? Checking. On the further, on the future one? Copy. Asmund Belly works to remove H fixture bolts. O'Hara is working to remove the solar array rotary joint cover. If the bolt pops out, you can stop turning. Uh, we just don't want you to go any more than 11. Copy.
You can see O'Hara also using the PGT or the pistol grip tool on the right side of your screen. Once she removes this solar array rotary joint cover, she'll be able to access the trundle bearing assembly that she'll remove and replace. Turns on two Bravo, outboard. Copy two Bravo, eight turns for Laurel. And from Jaws, Bolt three released 11 turns. Copy 11 turns on the H fixture, Bolt three. You know, it's top and off, but it's not quite like the other one. Like, uh, it doesn't seem as fully released as Bolt 1 does. Okay, we copy. Bolt 1 is definitely released. Bolt 3 seems like it maybe has another turn on it or something. Jaws, you are go to put one more turn on it with a PGT. One more turn. Copy, one more turn. Okay, one more turn on goal three. Uh, I, I think it, it, it is actually released. Okay, good copy, Jaws. And Laurel, if you could pause there. Uh, we think you might have been on the cover, uh, the wrong cover. If you're on the left side of that uh, tether point, that's uh, cover three, stand by for step. Okay, copy. I was just about to ask, I thought I was, how are you doing? And Laurel, can you uh, uh, let us know how many turns you put on that bolt? Eight. Okay, copy. And uh, uh, no worries. You're go to continue on uh, on cover on your uh, cover two, and we'll have steps later just to retorque that one back down. Okay. Okay, copy. Okay, and from Jazz, Bolt 2 released 11 turns, still similar to how Bolt 3 did. Um, so, uh, I don't know if you want me to put one more turn. Checking. And you are go for one more turn on Bolt 2. We do copy uh, 11 turns on the H fixture Bolt 2. I have all bolts released. It looks like the cover is free. All right, copy. You are going to attempt to the removed cover out of the way uh, near the uh, red anchor. Please. Okay, on bolts two, release one additional turn. And I don't know, I might just be giving myself extra work. It might have already been released as well. All right, we copy.
And as that cover comes off, Laurel, a reminder, the first thing that we're going to want to do is kind of check for any of those that metal flakes or damage to the race ring or anything else that you see as you get your eyes on. Copy. And I have to cover Tim Stode on 3864. Copy, it's Tim Stode. Um, and so we'll take uh, next thing a good HECA inspection of the outboard race ring in particular, uh, uh, reporting any metal flakes or uh, damage that you see. And both four released uh, nine turns. Happy that uh, nine turns on bolt four and that it's released. You can stow your PGT and then we're going to attempt to remove that H fixture. Okay. It didn't just pop off. It did just pop off. It did not. <laughs> I wish. I had a feeling it wouldn't. Okay, PGT and trash bag are stowed. Just try to give it a touch to start. That's correct. Uh, so you can attempt the H fixture removal just by pulling on the tether point. Copy. And for EV2, I'm not seeing any metal shavings on the race ring. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. It's obviously greasy. And there's some, a little bit of overflex, but it's not much. Like, it's not like the sort of Um I don't. Okay, that's great news, Laurel. Uh, none was expected and, and certainly none Looks was hoped for, hoped for. So um, you can pre-position the TBA yeah, bag bundle um, for access, uh, make sure that that's in reach. And we're going to open up the bag TBA labeled degraded and retrieve the French hooks uh, that are on the integral tethers. And while you do that, I'm going to read you a couple of warnings. Um, Note that the uh, sharp, edge ha sharp edge hazard exists um, on the bearing package, so limit contact just to the tether points. And we want to keep the rets and any hardware away from those exposed sarge rings. Please. And uh, much to my dismay, that did not work. All right, we copy. So our first step is to uh, use the wedges or the pliers into the H fixture channels. Okay, just adjust my position here. And reminder that those channels are kind of uh, uh, up and down from uh, bolts one and two closest to you. For Laurel, I'm going to give you these couple prep steps together in case you uh, see stuff in front of you. So we're going to get those French hooks um, from the bag labeled degraded. And we're going to open and prep an EVA wipe. Okay. And then we're going to open up the uh, TBA bag and make sure the caps are in reach. Great. I just dropped a rat on the TBA bag from my mini workstation. Close by. Okay, copy. And just big picture for you. I think that'll also help keep the. But. Okay, yeah, just big picture for you. Uh, uh, we're going to do the connectors first, then we're going to install the French hooks, then we're going to use PGT outs. Copy. And page three of your cup checklist has a drawing of the uh, TBA if you need it for reference.
for JAWS is you get out uh, all of the tools there. Um, you can choose whether you want to insert the wedges or the pliers into the H fixture channels. If you do the wedges, the end of the wedge should go flush with the H fixture. Okay. And you can tend back some of that MLI if you need to. Now that O'Hara has removed the solar array rotary joint cover, she can move on to demating, demating and remating uh, some cables ahead of removing the trundle bearing assembly. Meanwhile, Mobelli continues to work on removing the H fixture, having loosened four bolts on the fixture itself. That's got the fresh hooks out of the degraded bag. Copy, and we'll just position so you can uh, grab those when you need them. Get the next step. And for Laurel, uh, we will uh, be demating that connector when you are ready. I'm ready. All right, we're going to go for the uh, NZGL connector on the inboard receptacle. Um, so that's farthest from you. You're going to demate the TBA NZGL connector from the inboard charge ring, and then we'll take an inspection of those connections. Hey, okay, I'm on the inboard NZGL, uh, J15. I'm demating. Copy, and this is the same place that we'll end up remating uh, with the new TBA if you want to make a mental note. Copy. That's, yeah, that's pretty obvious. I could get. Okay, and I see this pen. City in my band, no fog. Copy, get in. Receptacle. Well. Have a good inspection. You go to mate the uh, twist cap from the degraded TBA bag to the Sarge NZGL jack, and you can release the RET once it's uh, mated. And just a reminder, we won't be putting a cap on the degraded side. Happy.
Coming up on one and a half hours into today's spacewalk, Jasmine O'Billy continues to work on removing the H fixture that will allow for a future solar array installation. These were not designed to be removed during spacewalks. However, we've done so successfully a handful of times, so she's troubleshooting. And there were cheers all over Earth, Jazz. And confirmation that that H fixture has been removed. All right, you can uh, stow that H picture onto the AET back, uh, by crew log bag T. And then we'll take an inspection of the pad. Okay, copy. Okay, so it'll probably take me a moment to uh, get this bag cleaned up again. And do I do an inventory of this bag now? Checking. No, I need to get back in here for the cam potentially for the uh, camera. Right? And no need to inventory that one quite yet, Joss. Yeah, copy. And Jaws, as you uh, get everything in there, just a reminder that the the next thing you may want out of there is the scoop for CP8, uh, if you want to put that on top. Okay, copy. And then can you remind me with these cats, I've got it pressed on, but then I need to twist it, right? At the counter the cap is flush, I don't know if you can get in my Yeah, the counterclockwise twist. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I have it flush. Uh, okay, so it's like gone. Can't pull it off. And it's just kind of best effort. There's no visual indicator of it uh, being on. Yeah, no, it's a cap is on. Okay, then you're going to release that ret, and the ret will just tend back to the bag. Okay. And while that uh, tends back to the bag, uh, your next step will be to install one of the French hooks to the bearing package. O'Hara just installed a cap on a cable she demated. I pushed it on and then twisted it all the way counterclockwise. But these are the um, uh, picture on the cap that's proud is up against the axe. Um, but it is a little wobbly. If you can, I don't know if you can see it in my spectra. We can. That's a good view of it. We're talking to Mr. Rett. And Laurel, we think that's uh, good enough. Um, so as you move the red, we just say, um, we're gonna do that carefully and then we'll make sure we don't hit that uh, so as not to dislodge it. Okay, copy. Hey, red is removed. 
Nicely done. Uh, so next one will be to install the French hook from the degraded bag onto the bearing package. Uh, that's the one that's the bigger one that's closest to you, uh, the gate of the French hook away from the bearing package. Copy. For JAWS, when you get everything stowed, um, big picture for your next steps is going to be an inspection of the pad and a photograph, uh, and then we're going to be stowing and moving on to your survey. Okay. And I'd like to take a moment to thank your classmate, Josh, for the tips he gave me. They were definitely helpful. Is eight fixture lessons learned? The eight balls are always here to serve. <laughs> hey, the, the truck is on the bearing package. Copy, you can uh, get your PGT ready. We're going to be setting Bravo 2 counter 2. Just a reminder that the Bravo 2 torque setting um, can cause a bolt failure on bolt 3 which could result in a non-captive sharp edge. So we'll just uh, use the same care that we did before. So Bravo 2, counter 2. Okay. O'Hara is going to use her pistol grip tool again to release three bolts. And just a reminder for you, Laurel, uh, this is going to be kind of an iterative bolt release on bolts 3, 2, and 1. Happy. Um, and was I, we don't put, we're not putting the French hook on the mount package yet, is that correct? That's correct, not quite yet. Or we think it's, uh, well? no, not quite yet. Uh, we'll do that one in a little bit. Uh, we think it'll get in the way. So once you have Bravo 2 counter 2 um, on bolt 3, uh, we're going to go exactly one turn. Actually, on each of them, bolt 3 first, exactly one turn. Okay, I've got Bravo 2, counter 2, counter 2, three. counter 2, Bravo 2, counter 2, yep. and we're about Bravo 20, two, counter 2 set, and then, good read, and you're going to go exactly one turn, we're about to go into a handover, but you're going to do one turn on bolts 3, then 1, then 2, 3, 1, 2. Copy. Copy 312. I have my cuff checklist open as well. And I'm taking photos. Copy, Joe. And just as expected, we are in a tracking data and relay satellite system handover, which we will regain shortly for communications with the crew. Again, spacewalk started at 7.05 a.m. Central Time this morning. Jasmine Mogvelli has successfully removed the H fixture where a future International Space Station rollout solar array will be installed in the future. And Laurel O'Hara is working on removing a degraded trundle bearing assembly. This helps facilitate the rotation of solar arrays. Just before the handover, O'Hara was using the pistol grip tool to release three bolts on the TBA, the trundle bearing assembly. Once that trundle bearing assembly is removed, she will. Um, it looks like uh, they are all recessed. I don't see much thawed, maybe a tiny bit on on what would have been three. I think it's within the what was in the expected picture, so it looks good to me. And I've also taken some photos. But you probably want more. We always take more photos. Um, uh, we appreciate the report. Um, when you're complete with that GSC pad, uh, we'll take a glove and hap uh, inspection and moving on to the survey. Uh, we're going to basically be moving over to the left side. Okay, copy. I uh, gloves. Oh, well, hap is dry. Doesn't work. 
Gloves are good for EV1. Copy, good glove and hat for JAWS. Jasmine McBelly confirms a good glove and hat or helmet absorption pad check. And in work for EV2, that my safety cover come up into my website, so I'm going to get that set clear. Copy. The glove and hat check is done for each crew member after completion of tasks. on which bolt you were able to uh, get a turn on. Uh, just three so far. Copy one turn on bolt three uh, for the TBA. For Jaws, I'll just give you some words as you uh, get ready to move. Um, we'll be stowing the BR or stowing that crew bag on your BRT as you're doing, um, and then I think you're familiar with the five spots that we want to get photos. Uh, there's a chance you could reach over and get that uh, center pad from where you're at if you have the reach, um, and then we're going to do the uh, the sob bearings on the kind of on the bottom of the mass canister, and then the uh, GSC pad that's on just on the opposite of where you were working. So it kind of in whatever order makes sense and I uh, get heck of surveys and photos of each of those. Okay, copy. Also one note for you, Jaws, uh, as you move to the outboard side of that mass canister, you may be toward the end of your safety tether reach, um, and so as you translate, translate around the inside uh, when able. Or on the inside. Okay, copy. And then um, I'm going to take a minute and reset here. I keep pulling my Make each other um, up into the work site. So you just figure out those better position right now. Okay, good call, Laurel. Um, and just a reminder, we want to try to keep the PGT clear of those race rings. Yeah, I'm, I see. Okay, and I've got that crew bag. I'll head over to the other side. We copy. A great view of both astronauts outside at their respective workstations. Down at the bottom right with the red stripes around the bottom of her spacesuit is NASA's Jasmine McBelly. She's EV1 today. On the left with no stripes on the suit is uh, Laurel O'Hara, who is EV2. Again, both, space, both spacewalkers on their first expedition outside the hatch today.
And Jaws, uh, before you leave that work site, um, we just want you to double check that all of the MLI is tacked down to its original location around the H fixture, please. Uh, yeah, it is not. Thank you. Okay, MLI is back. Copy, thank you. <laughs> But and Laurel, we see you going. I'm time getting my PRT. It's good enough to hold my body. What? Copy. Yeah, we see you going for bolt one. Yeah, I couldn't get mine nearly as rigid as I wanted either. Well. After bolt three, correct? And Laurel, just so uh, we're tracking it. Okay, Anne, can you see the left? So for Laurel, could you just clarify, it's just the body position, or are you having issues with any of the bolts? I'm not having issues with the bolts, yeah. I'm just trying to get my BRT into a position where it's stabilizing me. Copy, um, I understand. I'm having a hard time getting it rigid enough where yeah, and then I also have my safety tether that wants to spring back on my face, um, so I think I need to do that as well. Copy, and uh, would it help it to route the safety tether around kind of the outboard of the VRT to help hold it down? Each other? Yeah. We'll do that. And Anne, whenever you get a chance, can you see the GSC pad in the go? Yes, that is a good view. And for big picture, we're talking about the uh, TBA task here, and we think that four hands are going to be better than two. Uh, so, Jaws, what we're going to have you do is um, suspend the survey at the moment, and uh, we're going to have you translate back the way that you came out so that you're just zenith of Laurel, and uh, we think that you can get into a good position either on uh, um, that 3866 handrail or just zenith over wherever you uh, think is good to assist her with um, kind of handing tools back and forth and managing that bag. Okay, copy. And Jazz, we are not planning on coming back out to this. Uh, if you happen to translate by some uh, sob and want to look at it with your camera, we'll take it. Um, but other than that, we'll get you moving back in to uh, Laurel. Okay, and so this job's kind of on the other side, correct? Yeah, they're kind of at the base. Uh, if they're not in your translation path, then uh, you don't need to go find them. Okay, copy. Well, can you, is there, was there, um, kind of a recommended body positioning to do these bolts, like as far as which way I'm oriented, or is it just first to 
choice here. Let's see if I can do it. Yes, we had originally looked at with feet outboard kind of where you're at um, and making sure also that you're rigidizing the base, um, the base of your BRT. I think I saw you uh, go for it, um, but the, that kind of the where it, where it attaches to your mini workstation, make sure those are also rigidized. Um, you could potentially also try to go from face one in the seat of hand row. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought about that as well. Yeah, the other way, if your feet go zenith, uh, then the BRT is kind of off to your left side, which might, uh, which may also work. Even with it, I've got it off. I've got it fully rigidized, and it just I just kind of move. Uh, it's, you know, as soon as I put the PV on the bolt, it just slowly away. And if this one doesn't work, uh, we can also look at um, if there's a twist in your BRT, it won't rigidize properly. Uh, as Jaws gets over to you, we could have her actually position on face one uh, to see if she could help you from the other side or if she could get a better grip on the PGT from the seat side. Okay. Okay, I'm coming over to you, Laurel. Bobby? So the boss pack looks pretty good. My command fairlead is removed. Copy the fairlead is removed, Jaws. I'm passing the radiator now. And Laurel, can you confirm that uh, that, that CGT yeah. torqued on uh, bolt well. one? Um, I have, uh, it did. I didn't get a one turn on it, but I have um, a green light and actual torque says 13.8. Okay, so understand on bolt one that you did not get one turn? That one full turn. Okay, I'm gonna look it down on just the next of you, Laurel, Bobby. My camera's hot here, let me go get that. Okay, and Laurel, we uh, we understand that uh, I'm getting my visor up tonight. That the PGT on Bravo two did not give you one turn um, for bolt one. 
Uh, so you are go to set Bravo 5, Bravo 5, counter 2 for bolt 1, one turn. Okay, copy. Uh, I'm going to need those settings again, though. No problem. Just let me know when you like them. And Laurel, tip three here at the I got my local on the same handrail that your bag is there, too. Okay. Can I come down, um, like, inboard of Laurel, you think? Or stay up here, do that? So a couple actions on how you guys want to attack the work site. Um, I, I think see Laurel moving inboard to see if she can get some more stability on the uh, side of the seat of handrail. Um, so you could stay zenith of her to manage the bags and passing things back and forth if she can get into a good stable position. Um, just let us know where you prefer Laurel. We're in another satellite handover with the uh, International Space Station and the TDRS, the Tracking Data Relay Satellite System. We do have audio communications with the crew, just awaiting to regain video. At the meantime, the International Space Station is in an orbital nighttime. The BRT with this F turn and it does try to change. Yeah, it is like half a second. Yeah. Okay. I have the PGT. Such a simple setup, but uh, very different. And I can let you know if I didn't find I can like try to push you in or something. Yeah. Or maybe crank on my uh, BRT, although I think I'm putting it all the way down. But, you know. Uh, I feel like I have one really tight and it still wasn't holding me. But I can maybe try to hold you. <laughs> so the other thing we were just uh, discussing, it's up to you if you well, where you think the positioning will be best, but uh, Jaws, if you want to go to where Laurel was, just outboard um, and see if you can get into a stable position, um, we could have you drive those bolts uh, if you can get, the, if either of you can get into a stable position. And we're at the one, two, three bolts, correct? Right here. Yeah. Yeah, A-form for Jaws, okay. it's a, one is the furthest outboard, two is the middle, and then three is the furthest inboard. Okay. Uh, oh, hang on. Oh, all right, you're about me. Yeah, well, let me, I can move if you want. I just need to do my vector. I'm just, just thank you. We've got tethers. Um, this is the PGT. Oh, okay. Rather than working on an Ethernet cable on twist, McBelly is now assisting O'Hara in removing the trundle bearing assembly. Yeah. Okay, and the other thing I was thinking was to go feet thingness and uh, BRT. The 865. Yeah. Um, but the, what I'm finding is, um, if you go BRT straight, uh, if you BRT the jaws on the wide part of the handrail, you end up kind of far away. Then I was, I had an F in my BRT, um, which I think is why it's not rigid. I think N can chime in here. Um, Okay, uh, as much as it could. If you, if you want to take the PCT and I'll try that? No. Okay. Let me know when you're ready for it. Okay, let me get mine down here. So what's the setting on the PCT for this? So, Jaws, uh, just to okay. orient you to the bolts, um, right now what we're trying to do is get one turn on bolts uh, three and then one and then two. Laurel was successfully able to do bolt three. Uh, for bolt one, the, the required or this planned torque was not enough. 
So we're currently in the crib sheet for bolt one, and so the settings are Bravo 5, counter 2, and we're looking for one turn exactly on bolt one, the middle bolt. Correction, the most inboard bolt. Okay, copy. Sorry, sorry I'm not inboard. Sorry, outboard bolt. Okay. It uh, is inboard labeled. Or outboard, outboard. Okay, it's good. the one that's labeled <laughs> one. Yes, I see it. That works. Do you want me to move over? Can, can you pull me back a second? Uh, actually, I can. Let me get out of your way. Let me just try this one more time from here. One turn. The crew members are able to see how many turns have been accomplished on the PGT, the pistol grip tool. They can also change the settings as requested. That's why you hear calls like Alpha 1 and Clockwise 2. And, uh, you can see the... Yeah, okay. I can tell you when you're a oh. Okay, ready? Okay, one turn on bolt one. All right, nicely done, you guys. Um, we can reset Bravo two, counter two, Bravo two, counter two, and you can do bolt two, one turn. In order to keep from turning with the pistol grip tool in microgravity, the crew members need some stability. So Mabelli has offered to provide that for O'Hara. Okay, I'll get your back. <laughs> it is um, not turning. Oh, does that turn? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nice. One turn on bolt two. That one turn even. Okay, copy. And uh, just for Jaws, you know what to expect. It's a little bit of an iterative release for, uh, with different settings and different bolts. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set alpha six counter two, alpha six counter two, and we're going to release bolt three again, exactly one turn. And just note, this does not release it fully yet. We just want one more turn on bolt three.
Alpha. Alpha six. Alpha six. Counter two. And we're going to release bolt three exactly one turn. Alpha six. Counter two. Copy. Okay, one turn. Now can you count the ten? Uh, uh, if you move your yeah, you can see that I don't think so. Okay, go. Ready? Yeah. Turn. Okay, one turn on three. Copy one turn on bolt three. Um, so Jazz, you can reset the PGT to Bravo two, counter two. Uh, for Laurel, we lost your heck if you don't mind um, re resetting your button. And then we're also uh, due for a glove check for Laurel. Again, for the PGT, Bravo two, counter two. Laurel. Do you get a free picture of your button, Laurel? I am. Okay, I see the green light. Okay, we copied green light, and for Laurel, we'll need a glove check also. And I've got nominal gloves and a dry hat. Copy, thank you. Uh, so for the next thing, we're going to be releasing bolt one. Uh, set Bravo two, counter two. Okay, grapple. Bravo two, counter two is set. Uh, releasing bolt one, one turn. Uh, bolt one is actually going to go six to eight turns until it free spins. Okay, copy. Okay, it's on, and I can check. Ready? Yep. One. Two. Three. Uh, one more. Six. That's uh, six eight turns till it's three spins. Or they just three spinning yet. Oh, sorry, I thought you said six. Yep, three ten, I'll count. Seven. Eight. Okay. Um, it doesn't look like it's loose yet. No, it doesn't. Okay, we understand eight turns and that it's not free spinning yet. Oh, it is not. It's definitely releasing, but it's not, yeah. Checking. Sorry, we have four. I'm just going to move a little. Thank you. Let me go for the. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Right, let you go. All right. You guys are go to continue releasing bolt one until it free spins. Okay. Copy. Copy. Now, two hours and five minutes since today's spacewalk began. Both O'Hara and Mobelli are working on removing the trundle bearing assembly, a degraded unit that O'Hara will then replace later in the spacewalk. Ready? How's that look? It, it doesn't, I mean, as far as I can tell, it's not free spinning. 13. Yeah, I think it is. Thank you. Uh, yeah, wait, give me one second. Sorry, Laurel, I didn't get to push you. Okay, yeah, I got it. Okay. okay, and we think that might be free spinning. It doesn't have like a nice uh, reassuring pop out like other bolts. Um, so we're going to move on to uh, bolt two. And reminder that releasing bolt two, the draw bolt, releases the preload arm <clears throat> until the arm swings open. So you can set Bravo two, counter two. And we're going to go to bolt two. Copy. And it will also free spin upon release about 14 turns. 
And you can expect that that's so Bravo 2, Bravo two counter, two, two. counter 2. And you can expect the bearing package will move away from the Sarge and the mount. Okay, copy. Ready, Jess? Okay, I'm ready. One, two, three. This is the second bolt being fully released. After the next one, the crew member should be able to remove the trundle bearing assembly itself. I think that might be free spinning. It's really hard to say from here, but you want to, if I push you down, can you get your finger on it? Does it seem? You can also check that preload arm. Goes, uh, I don't think, I'm not sure one is fully free spinning. Copy checking. Um, Jazz, let me, can I have, sorry. Can I <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, one second. Okay, I've got it. Okay. I'm just going to bring myself over here. Okay, I'll try to get that here away. There, that one is, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really call either of them free spinning, but I think it moves. Two is loose, or three is like I can't even wiggle the. Yeah, ball, if you can see that. Can you tell if the preload Two. arm swung open? Got it. That's that arm on the back side of it. Uh, it yeah, uh, it does look like it is open. We're it talking like about it. It's still being. Uh, Okay, so for bolt two, um, we're going to have you re-engage with Bravo two, counter two, and you can release that. Um, okay. Yeah, probably about five more turns, and reminder that uh, we should be able to pull that bearing package off uh, via the tether point if that's released. Okay, copy. Bravo two. No, yeah, Bravo two counter two. Bravo two counter two, correct. Oh, yeah, counter two. Um, bolt two. Good, good, good. I don't know if Yeah. It must have, uh, my PTT turned off, I think. Maybe. Hello, two, counter two. Yeah, I can see. Ready? Yep. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I think now it is. I think it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to get the PDT or you going in? Um, so actually this is going to go back into one of those bags over there. Oh, the PCT does? Yep. Uh, no, the bearing package. Oh, the bearing, okay. I can stow the PGT on my swing arm. Yep, so we'll stow the PGT, and then we're going to pull that bearing package off. Uh, reminder to keep the hand away from the grease that's on the bearings on that outboard race ring. 
and we're going to stow that uh, degraded bearing package back into the TBA bag labeled degraded. And while you're in there, you can retrieve the other French hook for the mount package. Copy. First one of these ones. Okay, yeah, I see it degraded. Um, so, there it goes. Um, you can pull it off and get it in there, or I can pull it off and can I hold the bag open, maybe? Yeah. And, uh, Laura. For uh, Jaws, if you're handling the bearing package, uh, just a reminder, we just want to handle that by the tether point. Um, there's a lot of greasy and sharp areas on it. Yeah, uh, let's try to let Laurel handle it mostly. Oh, I hold the bag. Okay, I'm splitting my hang on. Now we need this other point. This one? I'm pulling it now. Oh, that one. Got this one. Okay, trusty. Now, um, can you just close the Velcro on that? On that one? Yeah. On that bag, yeah. Absolutely. And you can let go of the bag. See if we can grab that other French hook from the bag to install okay, in the mount package. Close. All right, nicely done, you guys. Uh, so French hook onto the mount package tether point is the uh, next step. Get out of your way. Please. And for awareness, we're just over two hours in. We're about an hour down on the timeline, but uh, we're happy as we make uh, progress on this uh, highly important TBA task. Copy. Okay, we're ready for bolt three. Okay, uh, copy. Sorry, did you, the French hook is on the mount package tether point. Confirm. Okay, so you can set your PGT to alpha six counter two. Alpha six counter two. Reminder not to push in when you're uh, doing this bolt number three because um, that can cause uh, some side mounting on the clamp leg. Um, so as we release bolt three, that clamp leg will come open. Uh, you're going to go alpha six counter two and release bolt three fully. It should be approximately four turns. Copy four turns, alpha six counter two. Well, well, let me know if you want me to push in your back or not. Okay, I think I'm fine. Okay. Did you see that? <laughs> And there's four turns. And the bolt popped up. Copy. So while holding. And I need to push it down to release the. Yep, good memory. So while holding the mount package tether point, you can press on bolt three with the hand or the PGT to open that clamp blade. And then we're going to very carefully remove that mount from the race <laughs> ring using the tether point and stow it in that same degraded bag. I use my hand actually. What? I said I'm going to use my hand. Oh, okay. cool. Okay, the 
out package is off the next base ring. Copy, nicely done. We can stow that back into the uh, degraded bag, and we're going to close up that DB TBA bag labeled degraded using the Velcro liner. And reminder, we're not going to be opening that one again um, until it gets to the ground, actually. Copy. Almost two hours and 20 minutes into today's spacewalk, the degraded trundle bearing assembly has been removed. O'Hara will now move into some tasks to lubricate that area before installing a new trundle bearing assembly. Parts of the degraded TPA are in the degraded bag in the back, Velcro closed. Okay, Kathy, uh, we'll take a glove check from you both. And while you're checking your gloves thoroughly, I'll give you some big picture words. Um, we like the way you're working together at this work site. Um, the next step is going to be to do the lubing. Uh, we think that this is uh, probably a one-person task uh, since there's no PGT ops. So we're thinking that JAWS could move up to CP8. You're still close by uh, while Laurel works this lubing task. Uh, but if you feel strongly that uh, uh, forehands are going to make that task more successful, then we'll take your recommendation on that. Laurel, you let me know what you think. Yeah, I think moving is probably just a one-person job, and I it might be easier to move around a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. and I won't be far if you do decide yeah. to move back. Okay, so I'll head to CT8. I'll get cleaned up and head there. Okay. And and for gloves, I just have some black and yellow stuff, but otherwise uh, they look good. And can you say that again, uh, Jaws, for the something on your gloves? Yeah, uh, just some black and yellow scuff. They look like scuff marks, uh, but the gloves are good. It's just on the outside of the RTV. I don't know if you can see it in my camera or not. Okay, we understand just some uh, discolored scuff marks uh, for your gloves. Okay, and you can uh, start heading up to EV. Go ahead for Laurel. Uh, you can go ahead. I was going to yeah. get my glove report. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I'm set. Make sure I'm not untangled from all this. Um, nominal gloves for EV2. Same, just a little bit of grease on the right glove. Okay, copy. Um, so Laurel, you can get into position for the uh, for lubing the outboard race ring. And Jaws, you can start moving up to the CP8 work site. Um, reminder, I think you've stowed that crew lock bag P. Uh, if you think you might want the round scoop, you may want to grab it as you go by. Okay, copy. Big picture for the lubing. Uh, Laurel, I might have you just take a quick look at me before I head out. I think yeah. I might be making sure I'm untangled from yours. I think I am. Okay, actually I am good. You good, Jess? I'm good. Yep, I can see I'm clear. Okay. Did you have some words? Do you have this? Again, two hours and 20 minutes since we've started today's spacewalk. So far, Jasmine McBelly has removed the H fixture, which allows for future IROSA addition. That's a new rollout solar array. The team ran into some difficulty removing the degraded trundle bearing assembly, but that has been successfully accomplished as well. And Laurel, we see you kind of back into the original config with feet outboard, is that correct? Okay, can I just, Laurel, can you just 
look as nice as each other behind my legs. Um. Um, it is, yeah, it looks like it's between your legs right now. Okay, uh, which way do I need to go? Um, let's see. It's streaming basically straight back, like in line with your body. So if, you go, go, if you just go the yeah, legs up and then rotate your body, um, else you need to go a little farther. Which side do you want it to be on? Well, it's coming off my left side. So there, are so you going to fall under now? Yeah. So now your safety cover is to cross your body. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. O'Hara was helping McBelly configure her tether properly as McBelly heads out to work on a Ethernet cable untwisting task. Meanwhile, O'Hara is preparing for her next task. She'll be applying some lubricant to that trundle bearing assembly area going to be to prepare the work site for the lubing um, by retrieving and positioning dry wipes and temp sewing both grease guns to where you can uh, get them. Okay. And the first one that you'll want in your hand is the J-hook grease gun. The J-hook. I'm back at my fair lead, which I will leave in place. Okay, copy that you're at uh, uh, 3681 at your fair lead. Um, so we're going to be assessing that work site, assessing the cables um, for the pictures that I'm sure you remember. Um, if you need uh, some translation out, aid out on the TVCIC, uh, you can take that round scoop. Okay, and we're just going to be trying to align that cable so that the cable travels straight along the stanchion. Okay. okay, I'm going to fill my bag. I will, uh, it's right here, so I'm going to leave the round scoop for a moment while I assess. Copy, and we're hoping that just that twist on that cable is sufficient. Okay, All right, I've got a wipe ready. And I've got the grease gun ready. All right, copy. Uh, J hook. Awesome. Uh, reminder now that the. I will leave the straight grease. I'll leave the straight line in the bag for now. Okay, that works. Um, reminder that the grease will flow as soon as the shutoff knob is rotated. So you've got your dry wipe ready, and that the grease uh, is probably going to sputter and pop. Um, you do have steps uh, for using okay. and safing the gun on step on four. I can re uh, read these through to you each time, um, or you can uh, uh, do them on your own once we do them the first time. Um, so the first thing on the J-hook grease gun, you're going to engage the teeth by rotating the plunger 180 degrees so the black triangle's up. Remove the MLI tip cover.
rotate the hinge restraint ring. I'm thinking about just, uh, just doing kind of a press placement before I actually start flowing grease. How does that sound? We like that plan. And we want to especially prioritize, <laughs> we especially want to prioritize that area where the uh, TBA is going to, where it just came off of and where it'll go back onto. Okay. Just want to get a feel for what kind of angle. And there is uh, some Velcro on that cap if you want to attack it down to the side of the gun so it's not in your way as much. This view from O'Hara's helmet camera showcases one of two grease guns she'll be using. Uh, so we're looking to uh, hopefully just roll the excess toward the racetrack so that it aligns. Uh, and if you look up, you can kind of see the camera hood, and the issue that we've been having is we think that that camera hood has been catching on the cable excess, uh, so that's what we're going to try to fix. Okay, copy. Meanwhile, Jasmine McBelly is going to be working with this Ethernet cable to uh, tie that closer to the International Space Station structure. How does that look? Um, in the camera. And so Laurel, if you pick up the back end of the grease gun so that the flat part of the J-hook is on top of that race ring. And just so you know, we just uh, lost KU for a sec. Um, yeah, so what I have is the flat part. Um, you got Yeah, so the, the handle is probably going to be a little bit up uh, uh, from where it was when we lost the camera. But yeah, the flat part of the inside of the J is on the flat part of the uh, um, of the flat surface, right and then that hook will just kind of go right in there. We are in another satellite handover. Obviously, we have audio communication with the crew and will regain video communication shortly. Again, both crew members have split up and are working on separate tasks now. It's been two hours and 30 minutes since today's spacewalk began. Jasmine McBelly has removed the H fixture. Handover. If you're comfortable with your position, um, then you're go to rotate the shutoff knob such that the flow is pointing toward the nozzle, and then you can go ahead and grease that inner canted surface. Uh, reminder: we're looking for about three clicks, and then you can pull that uh, the J hook off and make sure that you've got a grease smear on the inside of it. Okay, copy. And are you expecting um, it to just flow and then stop flowing, or it's going to flow and start and keep flowing? That makes sense. Each click will give you a certain amount of flow and then it should stop. Okay. And let me know when you've got a second. And go ahead, Josh, just aware if you're both aware we have no camera, but we got you on audio. Oh, okay. I was gonna ask you a camera question. <laughs> What's the bend radius on this cable? Minimum bend radius? Checking. Speaking with the crew members here on the ground is NASA astronaut Ann McLean, today's ground IV. She's the single point of contact during the spacewalk to O'Hara and McBelly to ensure communication remains streamlined as they work through our tasks. Happy we understand no grease flowing. Um, if you just take a look at it, uh, double check that the black triangle's up. The tip covers off, the hinge restraint ring is rotated. 
And then that shutoff knob is uh, so the flow is pointing toward the novel, nozzle. O'Hara is working to grease the solar array rotary joint, or the SARGE, where the trundle bearing assembly was just removed. To, uh, squeeze the trigger and release a little bit of grease until you see it come out, um, and you can uh, squeeze that into a wipe. Yeah, that's what I did. That's how I figured out no, no grease flows, and then I pulled the trigger, and I'm not getting any grease. Checking. After this work site is lubricated, she'll then install a new trundle bearing assembly. Okay, I got some grease. Sorry. Okay, we copy. Yeah, we were going to have you manipulate the uh, triangle in the back, but if you have a good flow, then we're happy with that. Oh. And if you could just let me know when you get video back. Copy, not quite yet. It'll be about two minutes, Charles. Okay, copy, maybe I'll just put this in place and then you can look. As today's spacewalkers continue their tasks, we are coming up on a major milestone tomorrow when the International Ce Space Station celebrates 23 years of continuous human presence. And, um, am I greasing the entire length of exposed bracing? Affirmative, Laurel, the, the, all of the exposed side. With 23 years of continuous human presence, in space, that means if you are under 23 years old, there has never been a day in your life that all humans have been on planet Earth. And Jaws, the uh, bend radius is about three inches on that cable. We do have your video back. We see you on the race ring. Okay, so if I were to, uh, it, it goes on the outside of this other cable. Um, if I were to put a, a wire tie down here and pin it there, I pin it down here where my hand, where my thumb is, where I'm pointing, then uh, that's what, as you can see the top, that looks good to me. We see that, we are you checking that. that. Yeah, we have a good view of that, thanks, and we are talking about it. Okay. I don't know if it would be better for me to demate and remate it. And we're talking about the slack, but there needs to be slack uh, so that it can pan and tilt still. Okay. And if yeah, it just so when I let it go, so it's it's definitely straighter. If you can see when I let it go after having undone the twist, it does bounce back a bit. So this is the hands off of it. It's it still uh, looks like the hook is mostly in line with the stanchion. So I don't know if that's. Okay, we understand that report and the hook. We're talking about it. Okay. They're just talking about it because they're expecting a little bit of a loop at the top, uh, so stand by one. Oh, yeah.
And Jaws, if you can, we're wondering if you can go up the stanchion a little bit, not past the TVC I see, but uh, a little bit closer so we can get a better view of kind of the outboard end of the cable and the hook, French hook. And Laurel, we see you uh, gr gracing away. Uh, so I gave it uh, three clicks and ran it length of the race ring. I definitely got the part where the DA mounts better. Um, I think I'm good with the J. Oh, if you guys agree. Yeah, we agree. We can. I don't have. I gave it three at trigger clicks. Okay. So. Yeah, we like that. Uh, we, that's great. And we notice your gloves are still white. Nicely done. Uh, so you can clean that nozzle with a dry wipe, and then we're going to rotate the black triangle down and the shutoff knob so that flow is perpendicular to the nozzle. Totally unscathed. I do have one grease spot on my list. Oh. Well, I still got a happy team down here with uh, that grease job. Nicely done. Thanks. I'm doing well. So we're going to rotate the black triangle down, the shutoff knob so that it's perpendicular, and then you're going to rotate the hinge restraint ring and put the tip cover back on. Copy. Good words coming here from Anne McLean in Mission Control Houston. Okay, yeah, the, the problem is uh, without remating and remating or getting rid of the slack, it kind of just, just pops back up a bit. So I can. Down, we are looking and talking about it, Jaws. That would give you the, you can see the French hook right now. That's where it's sitting naturally. Copy, we're looking, uh, we don't have a great view of the French hook, if you can look a little bit more outward. Okay, let me know when you see it. Yeah, we see it. We see the French hook kind of facing uh, port. This view from McBelly's helmet camera as she works to reduce some of the slack on this cable and more closely secure it to the International Space Station. Yeah, we're looking at getting a little straighter through there, but so that it's not pulling so port on the French hook. Uh, they're talking about it. In the background of Mogbelli's helmet camera, the International Space Station is flying 259 statute miles over the Gulf of Mexico. With a wire tie, you mean? Or actually physically twisting Just the physically cable? Twisting the cable. Yeah, I did, but maybe let me do one more. Yes, you are going to do one more. And Laurel, I see you've got the uh, straight end Request. grease gun. All right, let me know when you're ready for steps. I am, and uh, just a quick question. Can I use the same um, EVA wipe that I used for the J-hook? Yes. I don't have a lot of grease on it. Yes, that looks great. Uh, since you were so clean, you can go to use that one again. Uh, so we can prep the straight nozzle grease gun. And so you're going to Okay, I don't need steps. Perfect. Yeah, and the, the problem is uh, if, if I release it, it goes right back. And I, uh, if I tie it down, then there's not a lot of slack. Copy, we see that. Talking about it. 
And for Laurel, uh, when that gun is ready, you're going to be greasing the outer canted uh, surface and the datum A, that flat surface. Um, also about three clicks with the gun trigger, prioritizing where the PBAs would be installed, but uh, greasing that whole exposed surface if you can. Okay, copy, and that's uh, three clicks on the datum A and three clicks on the outer skin. That is correct. That's correct. That's correct. Or three clicks total. Three on each. Yeah, and maybe if I do made it and remade it. We're talking jazz. All right, Jazz, um, we talked about it. So big picture, we, we, want, we don't want there to be any forces on that uh, French hook, as you know. So you are go to demate the cable, and we think you may need to like pre-put a twist in before you remate it. Um, the intent being that the cable travels along the stanchion um, and that there's no forces imparted on the French hook like it is right now. Okay, copy. Go to demate. And to clarify, we think that the twist will be closer to where the French hook is. But I'm demating from right here, correct? And Laurel, you were asking about clicks. The, um, the, the official answer. answer is more grease is better. Uh, so if you put a little extra on, uh, that is quite all right. Okay. I don't know if you can see in my uh, in my HECA, but I definitely I think have it up grease on. Yep, it's a little shaded, um, but that's a good view, right. and so you're going to go for the outer canted surface. Okay, is that is that sufficient for the inner surface? It's shaded, so we can't see it, so we'll take your judgment. Okay, all right. And I just want to confirm after the last comment you made, I'm still, I'm demating here at the base, correct? That is correct, Jaws. And Laurel, no action required, just for your awareness, your HECA is getting a little warm, so as expected, we're going to turn it off right now so that we can uh, get your view back when we go to bolts. But you are going to continue the greasing. Okay, copy. Are we going to stop and turn it off? No, no action. No, no action for Actually, you. Gonna we can do it from the ground. Uh, no need to do okay. anything. Oh, copy, copy, copy.
That's excellent. Thanks, Laurel. Uh, you can go ahead and safe that uh, straight nozzle grease gun. Right. And once that's uh, safed, uh, your next steps are going to be to stow the grease gun uh, back between the TBA bags and then use a dry wipe as required uh, to clean up uh, your suit and any tools. NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara has completed the lubrication of that solar array rotary joint area where the trundle bearing assembly was removed. Say that again, Jeff. Any tips for a stuck MZGO? Copy. If that's been in the sun, try shading it uh, for about 10 seconds and trying it again, and we'll get other uh, steps. And Jaws, can you uh, give us any words? Has the has it moved at all, or is it uh, it's kind of stuck in its original position? Yes, it has moved. Uh, I just can't get it over center. Copy. As O'Hara uh, stows the grease guns she's been using, McBelly continues to work on the CP8 Ethernet cable task. Okay, Jaws. Okay, Ann, I got it. Excellent. It's aft over center. Love it. All we had to do was open the crib sheet and it came off. And Laurel, as you stow that stuff uh, back in the bags, um, your next step is going to be to uh, access the bag labeled spare, and we'll be retrieving the mount package of the spare.
And copy, I say, say you got the mount package, Laurel? Yes. Okay, you can uh, verify that the mount clamping leg is open. And you're going to engage the mount on the inboard race ring, aligning that square mount box with the slot. And then you can close the uh, mount clamping okay, leg. Okay, and, uh, and in order to do this, um, I'm going to have to put my hand down into the base ring in order to close the lower leg. Yeah, we uh, we understand that. It's like a game of operation. I'm just trying to be very careful and not uh, getting the gr any more grease. <laughs> I think um, that will be difficult, <laughs> but I will try. Copy, definitely best effort. And you, this hook, you want the, uh, remind me, the hook in facing the box? Checking. Like this? Yeah, so Jaws, you're looking at the, the problematic spot um, for sure. So we think that the, that cable should be, rather than coming down the port side of that TVCIC and pulling on that hook, it should be kind of coming down, tended more toward the middle side so that there's no actual tension on that uh, French hook strap, so that it just kind of free floats. And the cable is probably gonna need to twist in order to be able to move it a little bit more starboard. And Laurel, as you get that mount clamping leg closed, a reminder that your first step is gonna to be to turn by hand uh, bolt number three while holding that leg closed. And you want exactly two turns on that. And those turn counts are really important. Um, do I need the, the leg clamp, I get snapped closed. Do I need to hold it closed while I'm, oh, because the bolt will reopen it, right? Answered my question. Yeah, that was a that was a good catch, Laurel. Um, as long as you're not pushing on the bolt, obviously uh, that that opens it back up. And you probably you may need to keep yeah, your I hand back. My beard. And, and my understanding is how it is now is how you want it, correct? You can see in the hipaa. Can you move a little bit port with the HECA? We can't see the French hook. That is a great view, and uh, we are talking it now.
All right, Jaws, we think that uh, it, right where your right hand is, if you push that cable out, uh, like outboard the stanchion, if you look at the, the little hook that is in line with the cable, right now the, the big part, the end of it, is kind of pointing out out the stanchion. We actually need it to go the other way. So if you push the cable out, and it'll invert that hook. And then when we reinstall the connector, we want to make sure we don't pull back down on that. Does that make sense? Like it is now? Go a little bit to your right. We're talking about it. And for EV2, just a quick note, I think I have the bolt hand started. Okay, and we want exactly um, two turns on that, if can. Done. Okay. And once you're good with the two turns, Laurel, you're going to be transferring the RET from that mounting bracket um, to the uh, low, pro or not the low profile truss cap, but the, uh, to the cap that you have installed. Happy. We've just reached three hours into today's spacewalk. So far, the trundle bearing assembly has been removed, and Laurel has completed the greasing of the solar array rotary joint, where she is preparing to install a new trundle bearing assembly. Hey, um, I will remove the uh, rat and over to the cap. Yep, right over to the cap. Uh, and then after that, you're going to be retrieving the bearing package for JAWS. That's a good orientation, and we don't want to change that. So we, what we want to have you do is um, gently put a wire tie around the racetrack and around the cable so that when we install it, we don't pull it into the wrong orientation. Okay, Kathy. Since the start of today's spacewalk, NASA astronaut Jasmine Mabelli has removed the H fixture in preparation for a future IROSA install, a rollout solar array. She also assisted with the trundle bearing assembly removal and is now securing a wire or a uh, Ethernet cable to the space station. And Laurel, we see the uh, the ret on the cap, so we'll be getting the uh, bearing package, and we're going to engage the bearing package onto the mount. And again, my, minding that race ring that you uh, just beautifully greased. And Jaws, for you, uh, once we get done with this task, we're going to have you move back down um, to assist Laurel with the install. Okay, copy. Well, are you doing all right? How about you? Yeah, good. Okay, the bearing package is installed. Copy, Jess.
And Laura, we see you. And are you sure the problem's not What the fuck it? Yeah, stand by one, Jaws, for Laurel. Uh, we, your go to, uh, now you've got that bearing package on, you can access your PGT, and we're going to be driving bolt number two. Copy. And Jaws, go ahead, sorry. Uh, I was just saying, uh, the problem might be above it, but I'll try to get it to stay. As you can see, Laurel O'Hara is using the pistol grip tool. She will drive three bolts to securely fasten the new trundle bearing assembly to the solar array rotary joint. Again, these pieces are what help the solar arrays turn as they track the sun and store power for the International Space Station. As it gets pulled forward or outboard. From the cable on top. Yeah, copy, we see that. Do you have any other suggestions if uh, the intent is to get that uh, flipped 180 and not having, not pulling hard on that tether point? Is there anything else you could see that could help? Can I undo and redo this front trip? Really, yeah. All right, Jaws, yes, you are go to unhook and rehook that. For Laurel, uh, your settings are okay. alpha one, clockwise two, and reminder that the straw bolt two will engage the bearing arm under the race ring. So alpha one, clockwise two. Okay. I And it'll be uh, bolt number two, the draw bolt. It's going to be 12 to 14 turns to torque. And if needed, you can push from behind. Okay, copy. Um, I've got alpha one, applies two, uh, having 12 to 14 turns. That's right. And just and then, and say again. Yeah, 12 to 14 turns on draw bolt two. And bolt number. Bolt number two. Okay. And uh, you can push from behind if you need to. And just a reminder that slight side loads can torque out an Alpha 1 setting, so just uh, be real careful. Okay, copy. Uh, I keep uh, my TV off. Copy, see that. Okay, and as I work out of town, you need me to uh, leave some slack. Checking. Yes, there does need to be some slack in the cable to allow for the panning and tilting. Copy.
and big picture for both of you, we're about three hours in. Uh, we are happy with the progress, uh, especially on that ever so important TBA. Um, just for your awareness, we've replanned the timeline to where we are going to go after the TBA bolt, but we are not going to um, do the procedure to bring it back in the airlock. Sorry for the wedge clamps I meant. Uh, and uh, so for big picture for the replan timeline, we are right on time and we're about three hours in. Limited consumable, still battery EV2. Give me one copy. Give me two copies. As the crew members continue their tasks, the timeliners have reworked today's timeline. The RFG, the radio frequency group, will not be removed from its stanchion as was previously planned. However, it will be prepped for removal on a future spacewalk with some clamps being uh, removed. And Laurel, it might help if you put your end effector down on one of the adjacent handrails that you can kind of push against. I just call. Okay, I'll let me know when you've got a good view. And Jazz, if you oh, go no, to your sure. right uh, just a little bit, uh, then we can see the hook. That. We're talking about it, Jess. Yeah, so you can see it. All right, Jess, we are happy with the configuration for CP8, so you can go ahead and translate down and reconnect the uh, connector. Okay, coffee. Nice effort. We know that's a tough task with a lot of gray area. In this helmet camera view, Laurel O'Hara continues driving the three bolts that will secure the new trundle bearing assembly to this solar array rotary joint. Meanwhile, Jasmine Wunkbelly is completing her uh, Ethernet cable tieback. She will remate a cable that was demated previously before moving on to her next task. Hey, Laura, we think another thing that may help um, is if you want to hand start that bolt, uh, if you want to hand start that bolt rather than trying to use the PGT, that might stabilize the, the whole package. Okay. And you may have to use one hand to push on the back and then one hand to hand start. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay, and um, made it over center, no side, no bend pins, good EMI band, and I'm just taking a look at this config. Uh, do you, let me back out a little, maybe you'll get a better view. Okay, we copy and we got the inspection and the made it over center, appreciate it. Okay, uh, 
me know when you've got a good view. And Jaws, we are happy with that configuration. Uh, we're going to do some checkouts here. You can uh, go down uh, to assist Laurel as needed uh, on the install. Okay, copy. Where did my bag go? Oh Can I sell my bag on thirty six eighty three? And uh the that's the one that was called out, uh, but if, I think you may have stowed a little bit more outboard toward Laurel's work site. And I've got on bolt two, um, counted 11 turns, got a good green light, works point four. Copy, bolt two, 11 turns, checking. And Jaws, I think you're kind of one block uh, zenith from where your bag is. If you go back toward face one uh, to 3681 and 3802, uh, you should find your crew lock bag. You're saying go, go back later. Yep, got back towards face one. Back toward where your uh, rich man's fair lead is. That's mine. Okay, I'm back. And Laura, we're still talking about bolt two, standby one. Okay. And Laurel, did you know um, how much hand start did you get before those 11 turns on the PGT? I actually, I didn't hand start it at all. Okay, copy. And for what it's worth, the PGT has uh, 12.3. Oh, we don't use that, but. And for Laurel, we're going to hit it with one more turn. It's a little bit lower than expected. So on that Alpha 1 clockwise 2, um, go ahead and uh, uh, do. Bolt number two uh, to torque. Copy. And I'm back at 3681. Okay, copy, you're at 3681. Uh, I do not see my bag. Okay, we copy. Um, and if you move out a little bit toward uh, Laurel, um, so go out back toward 3866, just above where the uh, uh, large ORU bag is. For EB2, it is twerking out. I'm not getting an additional turn on it. Okay, copy. I'm just... So one clockwise two. Okay, that's a good bolt to uh, Laurel. So we're going to move on to a handover. As noted, we are in a handover of the satellites and that allow us to communicate with video and audio to the space station. We'll regain that shortly. In the meantime, McBelly is uh, going to retrieve a crew lock bag before heading back to the airlock, stowing that. O'Hara continues installation of the trendle bearing assembly, where she previously removed the degraded one earlier today. 
It's been about three hours and 20 minutes into today's spacewalk. Okay, copy. Do not see my bag. And Jaws, when you stowed it, was it close to the large ORU bag? We're wondering if maybe Laurel put it inside of the large ORU bag or if it got uh, stowed or tied up in there. And I, I thought I stowed it on 3683 by the camera. Okay, understand. Um, we'll take a look at it for right now if you want to get in a good position um, to assist Laurel. And for Laurel, uh, you're looking okay. for Alpha 2 Clockwise 2, and you're going to be driving Bolt 1 to Torque. And uh, note that if it doesn't bite on the first uh, kind of couple of turns, uh, you, you may need to use a hand behind the bolt. Uh, this has had some issues grabbing the first threads. Um, so if the, just try to see if the bolt is kind of free spitting or if it really bites on it. So again, Bolt 1 to Torque, Alpha 2, Clockwise 2, you're expecting around six turns. We've got Alpha 2, clockwise T set, expecting six turns on bolt one. Good, Rebecca. Hey, Jeff. Hey. Okay, Laurel, what can I help with? I'm just about to drive bolt one, and I think I'm going to be in a good position. Okay, so I'll just stay out your way then. Yeah, give me one second to throw my mini orchestration on the structure. I can just. Okay, I can take it. Okay. Think I'm good. Okay. Hey, I'm on boat one, driving six. Copy. And we copy. Okay, I got about five and a half turns. Green light, torque 3.6. Okay, we copy. That is a good bolt. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is drive bolt three to torque, two to four turns. And that's also alpha one clockwise to bolt three. Okay, alpha one clockwise to bolt three. Good read back. Yeah, could you help me count turns on this one? Uh, yeah. I'm in a good position. Okay. Do I look straight on the bolt? You do not. Okay. Starting turn. Okay, copy. One. Okay. Um, that torques out, I think. In light. For 2.1. That was one turn. Copy one turn and we copy the torque. Uh, stand by one. Between one and two turns. Copy. We're checking. Stand by one.
supervisors up. We're still chatting about it. All right, so we're going to have you just um, check your body position, side loading, et cetera, and uh, um, verify alpha one clockwise two, and we're going okay. to just reattempt and let us know if you get any turns. Okay, alpha one clockwise two is checked. And then, Josh, uh, you just want to back me up on if I'm straight on this bolt. Okay, copy. Uh, from my perspective, it is. I can't. Um, yep. Now you are. Okay, and it looks like my perspective. That looks good. And yeah, I'm not getting any additional turns and things for 2.3. Okay, we copy. Uh, checking. Okay, Laurel, uh, we're going to release it for a turn and then reattempt. So go ahead and set Bravo 1, counter 2, Bravo 1, counter 2, and you're going to release one turn on bolt 3. We copy. Bravo 1, counter 2, release 1 turn. Good read back. And uh, say again the bolt. And we're on bolt number 3. And which bolt? Bolt number 3. Okay, copy the floor that, just let it do. Bolt number 3. You look good from, uh, there you go. One. It is one turn released. Copy, and we're going to set alpha one clockwise two again. Alpha one clockwise two, and we're going to drive that to torque. And we're hoping for two turns. Alpha one. Hey, copy. Okay, that looks good. One. I'm just doing one turn. Yeah. Yeah, you're straight on. Right, four. Okay, we copy. Okay, we're going to uh, increase the torque just a little bit, so uh, we're going to um, set alpha two clockwise two, alpha two clockwise two. And uh, go ahead and drive that and uh, hope for one turn. Okay. Do you want me to, you, you, I just need to adjust my TV real quick. Okay. Wait, just so we have two eyes on it. Okay, my TTV is set to three. Copy, Jaws, TCV set to three. Okay, I've got eyes on. Okay. And, uh, Jaws, are you close enough to um, see those two front, the front sharks with the rets on them? Where are they? Right next to the bubble socket. 
you close enough to the, or even if you pull the TBA bag back a little bit, they should go with it. Okay. Three and a half hours into today's spacewalk. Okay, ready? Yeah. Move like maybe an eighth of a turn. Yeah. Okay, we copy. Checking. Uh, green light 3.1 on the torque. Copy green and 3.1. Checking. O'Hara continues installation of the new trundle bearing assembly, now being assisted by Jasmine Mugbelly. This setup is similar to what we saw earlier, where Mugbelly is providing additional support to O'Hara as she drives these bolts using the pistol grip tool. The spacewalkers were informed earlier. I think you're on top of the TBA bed right now. Okay. A little bit. Yeah. Just um, okay. Just uh, don't slide any pressure over here. Okay. All right, we're going to, um, uh, to reset the torque, uh, we're going to release this a turn and then uh, set it back at the lower torque. So if you could set your PGT to Bravo 1, counter 2, Bravo 1, counter 2, and you're going to release bolt 3, one turn. See, Bravo 1, counter 2, one turn, bolt 3. Looks good. One turn. One turn. Copy, and you can uh, go ahead and set the PGT to Alpha 1 clockwise 2, and we're going to drive it back into torque. Have Alpha 1 clockwise 2. Looks good. Is it? Yeah. Due to some of the unexpected issues removing the trundle bearing assembly earlier, the crew will not be able to remove the RFG, the radio frequency group, as previously planned. Copy one turn and 2.4. We're talking about it. However, they will remove some clamps on the uh, RFG itself. This will set it up for removal on a future spacewalk. All right, nicely done, ladies. Uh, we're going to call that a good bolt, and we're going to continue. Uh, so you can stow the PGT. I want you to verify that you have no grease on your gloves uh, and on the table and the cap, uh, and we're going to be doing NVGL ops. Got a little bit of grease um, on the um, outer side of my glove, nothing on my palm. 
Okay, copy. Um, if you can see yeah, the view. Yeah, we do see that. Um, the important part for the NDGL ops is we don't want to get any grease, obviously, on the connections. Um, so at this time, you can transfer the RET from the bearing package onto the cap. Please, I can And that's the cap on the, yep, the one you got in your hand, the one on the cable. Another satellite handover, but trundle bearing assembly or TBA install continues. O'Hara has completed driving the three bolts necessary to attach the TBA. Okay, uh, so you go to demate that Sarge NZGL twist cap from the inboard receptacle and stow it in the TBA bag spare. So we're going to get both those caps off and get a good inspection while we do so. A good view from the helmet camera of Laura O'Hara as she. Hold your back or anything, Laura. Okay. Good right now. Laurel now removing a twist cap, an NG, NZGL, which stands for NASA Zero Gravity Lever. The camera views of the bag uh, being at the Sarge work site. Um, so if you want to look around, uh, uh, we saw it earlier. Um, so if you want to kind of retrace your paths uh, back to CP8 and kind of around that work site to see if you can get eyes on Krulak Bag D. Okay, copy. Good news. Um, okay, so you want me to go do that now? Yep, um, I think Laurel's got the connections, and so we'll give a good uh, uh, good effort to find that crew lock thing. Okay. And I have the twist cap off. Now that the work with the pistol grip tool is complete, O'Hara is removing these caps. And it's back in the spare bag. Okay. Yeah, it and uh, sorry, are both caps back in? Uh, nope, working on the second one. Copy. She will then mate one uh, NASA Zero Gravity Lever to the Solar Array Rotary Joint. After this work is complete, she will uh, reinstall the Sarge cover removed at the beginning of the spacewalk. Connections are working there. Both caps are back in the bag. 
Okay, copy. At this time, um, we'll take a good inspection on uh, the receptacle and the NZGL. And then we're going to mate the TVA NZGL to the SARS receptacle on the inboard side. Okay, we have ten with EMI then no pod. The receptacle is still good. Going. Copy, you are go to mate. Copy. My tether's going between my feet again, so just going outboard a bit to try to clear that. Copy. And Jaws, as you're uh, um, retracing your steps, if you go up a little bit more towards CP8, um, we have a kind of video of it earlier getting tacked down to a handrail that's up closer to CP8. So I'd retrace your steps back up that way. Okay, copy. Um, yeah, my, I think I've still got the tether, the tether wrapped around my legs. Okay, copy. Yeah, let's clear that first. Or behind my back, rather. NZL is made it full forward over center. Copy. Uh, at this time, uh, we can perform a HECA survey of the TBA work site. And then we're going to be cleaning up our tools from there. Um, our next step, obviously, is going to be to install that cover a great view and just make sure we don't have any uh, extra tools or tethers um, down in that work site. And we're going to okay. stow things back in the ORU bag and you can report the inventory as you clean up. Um, don't stow anything inside of the degraded bag and if there's if something wasn't opened like crew lock bag T then we do not need to inventory it. Copy. I love you. And Laurel, if you want to transfer your camera to you right now is a good time to do so. Happy. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, and so I'm back at my rich man. And translating towards CP8. Copy. And I'm at CP8. And if you come a little bit ISS inboard and just kind of follow that handrail path, maybe along there. ISS inboard. Okay, I'm looking inboard. I don't see my bag. Copy. And we are also checking. 
Belia is working to locate her crew lock bag, which she will then take back to the airlock before picking up a new bag in the airlock and heading out to the next work site. Okay. I'll spot it with this handrail right here. Yeah, we do, and we're just looking at the video. Okay. Hey, Jazz, from where you are, just on the other side of CP8, there's a couple of handrails on the aft side of station that you can kind of reach if you just reach past CP8 right there and just double check on those. It's just on the other side. Happy. Yeah, you see one right there. And then there's one inboard as well. Just want to check both those. Negative. Start on this one or the one one in board of this one. Okay, copy, Jaws. We can have you move uh, back down toward your uh, fair lead, and we'll have next steps for you in a minute. Copy. All right, so for EV2, I am reassembling my TBA bag, and I did not get into the tea bag. Okay. So that's still intact. My, cam my camera is now on my mini workstation, um, along with the red that it was on in the in the trunk in the auxiliary bag. Uh, the trash bag. Large trash bag is back in the CPA bag. Um, I have one a white on a ret. Um, I have one loose ret of a contingent ret. I have my gay little gay bag. Okay, we copy Laurel and the standby one for Jaws. I'm gonna have you pick up your adjustable fair lead and uh, we're gonna have you move in and start getting ready for the SSRMS setup. Okay, copy. And I'm going all the way back to the airlock, correct? And that is correct, yes. We're gonna go back and retrieve crew lock bag R. So uh, big picture, you're gonna be heading back in, picking up your green hook, uh, and then coming down the front of the lab. Uh, we're gonna do the adjustable fair lead there, um, and then go back to the airlock to get crew lock bag R.
And Laurel, as you're cleaning up, um, reminder that we'll want to know how many uh, used dry wipes are in your large trash bag, if any. Three hours and fifty five zero minutes into the EVA. Okay. Is that okay, or do you want it in the large trash bag? Nope, that is a that's a good config. Copy. So as you get that buttoned up, uh, just let me know when you're in position to do the SARGE cover, and I'll get steps for you there. And for JAWS, as you uh, head back towards your green hook, uh, reminder, you're going to head back inboard on the Zenith side of phase one, come down at uh, Bay 16, and inboard to the FHRC, and we'll pick up our green hook there. Copy. Mongbelli is heading back to the airlock to retrieve the next crew lock bag that she'll use at the next work site. Meanwhile, Laurel O'Hara is continuing work at the Solar Array Rotary Joint. Okay, we copy. Um, so the next thing we'll do is uh, retrieve Retrieving the cover. That's it. As you get the cover, just a reminder that these Fairchild fasteners are pretty touchy, so we want to minimize side loading. And what you're going to do is to uh, position okay. Sarge Cover 2 into its original orientation with a two-bolt side inboard. And then you're going to drive one turn by hand on each of the cover bolts, four of them, uh, not the ones that are next to the tether point, but the other four. And you have uh, cuff page uh, six has all the details for the Sarge cover install. O'Hara continues to work at the Solar Array Rotary Joint location. She's installing the thermal covers that she removed earlier to also expose the trundle bearing assembly, which has also been removed and replaced. And hey, Laurel, uh, uh, before you get that cover on, um, kind of a fun question. There's a serial number on the mount package, and we were wondering if you could read that to us. I'm zero five six. Copy, we appreciate that. Uh, back to plan A, we can install that cover. Uh, one turn by hand on each of the bolts, uh, the four bolts that are not by the tether point. Right, serial number. I'm kidding. And as you get this on, we recommend you start uh, with 3A, which is the farthest one away from the tether point. in my way and drop my DRT again.
Okay, I've got my green hooks back. Okay, copy. And it is locked. Yes, good check. I was just about to say that. Um, so you can go inboard to the lab struts. Those are mile marker about 7680, and you're going to go a nader on the port side lab struts, and then cross over starboard on that gap spanner, and you'll be looking for handrails uh, 252. Copy. going down the work strut. Copy, have you coming down the strut? Uh, and then we're going to cross over that gap spanner to 252, and you're going to be doing it a rich man's fair lead on 252. Copy, 252. Laura, well, are you doing okay? I'm good. On the right side of your screen, Laurel O'Hara works to uh, re secure the Sarge Solar Array Rotary Joint cover that was removed earlier to allow access for removal and replacement of the trundle bearing assembly, which has been successfully completed. Meanwhile, Jasmine McVelly is heading back to the airlock. She'll retrieve a new crew lock bag, essentially a tool bag. The next big task for these crew members is to start work on the RFG, that's the radio frequency group. Steve Bowen and Sultan al Nagadi had some trouble with this RFG earlier this year on a spacewalk. The crew members won't have time to fully remove the RFG today, however, they will uh, remove a couple of clamps that are attached and put it in a good configuration for removal on a future spacewalk. We're coming up on four hours since the start of the spacewalk this morning at 7.05 a.m. Central. Bravo. I went for a bolt of opportunity. Okay, bolt of opportunity, we'll take it. I'll be tricky to get my hand. Uh, 
Two alpha time started as well. Copy, nicely done. So I will work on three alpha, three alpha and three bravo. Just over four hours into today's spacewalk. Again, that's starting at 7.05 a.m. Central Time. Okay, and if you just look up and left, uh, we're just seeing your safety tether. Maybe that's your expected routing, but your safety tether kind of goes up above your head, and then it's just kind of cut a little bit on the MLI on that strut. Um, so just make sure that's a good config. If I can, yeah, I, I, I mean, I think that will release at the end of EVA when I head back. Like when I, once I go outboard of that MLI. Yeah, we concur. Um, so you can uh, you can go ahead and take the gap spanner now down to the, um, the front side of ESP2 and around ESP2 back toward the airlock, just keeping in mind that uh, your tether is going to be pulling in a different direction than usual. Okay, copy. Hey, big picture for both of you. Um, we're about four hours into the EVA. Uh, we're about 30 minutes down on the updated timeline. Um, but just for awareness, um, because we're not going to be bringing the RSG back in, we are going to forgo ARM operations for today. We are going to have you access the backside of the RFG, and we're going to work those wedge clamps, um, but we're not going to set up the APFR to do so. Copy. Okay, copy. And uh, which one of these? Oh, and they were both, both, three, both of these bolts were engaged earlier. Yes, we believe so. Actually, we think that three alpha was not engaged initially. Okay, that's. Are we trying to re-engage it, or am I just going for three Bravo? If we can uh, engage all of them, uh, that's great. Uh, if you are not able to access that, then uh, that's okay too. Okay. I can. Uh, I, I'm not sure if three. If 
you can push the bolt just kind of all the way down into the hole. Uh, so I'm not sure if I can do that with all of them. Okay. No, that makes sense, and we're talking about it right now um, to get the steps for the PGT. Um, just as you know, these bolts are kind of touching, so the concern is kind of stripping them or breaking them with any side loading on the bolts if we don't already have the first thread in. Um, so that's why the uh, why we've got these hand turns first. Um, but stand by one, and we'll uh, I'll get you the words for PGT. Uh, I feel like especially with three Bravo, there's this piece of MLI right here, so it's hard to come straight in and not put as well as on the bolt with my hand, you know, with the size of my glove. It, copy, and that may be the issue why 3-alpha wasn't done in the first place, so we've rediscovered <laughs> MLI problems. Yeah, there's the lip, uh, the lip on the cover frame for both of them, and then MLI for Bravo. I it was easy to get the get two A and two B. Okay, copy. We understand you've got a hand start on two A and two B, and that not yet on three A and three B. I think that one A, one Alpha, one and Bravo will. Only really challenging is the outside three both. We're talking about it, Laurel. Okay. Okay, Laurel, uh, we can switch to the PGT at this time. Um, so you can get your PGT. We're going to go alpha one, clockwise two. Um, and again, uh, very touchy bolts. So if you could uh, make sure that we're putting downward pressure on them, uh, no side loads, and we really want to make sure that that bolt is in the receptacle uh, prior to turns. I copy. Laurel O'Hara continues work reattaching the solar array rotary joint uh, cover that she removed earlier to access the trundle bearing assembly. That assembly has been successfully removed and replaced. Additionally, Mogbelli earlier removed the H fixture that will allow for a future uh, International Space Station rollout solar array installation. Mogbelli also completed the uh, Ethernet cable untwisting task. On the onion pin, and around the off side of SP2. Copy, great view. And you guys are just about to come down the uh, west coast of the U.S. Copy. And say again, settings, I've got alpha one. Affirmative, uh, alpha one, clockwise two, and we're only gonna go for the four, uh, not the ones by the tether point quite yet. So three A, three B, two A, two B. And you're gonna drive two turns, exactly two turns.
and And Laurel, just to clarify, you're going to do exactly two turns on the ones that you were able to hand start, and you're going to go three turns exactly on the ones that you are not. Okay, copy. Uh, do, you think it, uh, do you think it would be helpful to do those two turns on the two I was able to hand start first? Just to help align the other ones, or is it better to have some play? Be faster. And uh, yeah, the going after the ones that you did not hand start uh, may be advantageous. And Jaws, we see you back at the airlock. Okay. And I'm good to open thermal cover? You're good to open the thermal cover. That'd be interesting, the airlock. This view from Jasmine Mobelli's ham helmet camera as she has made it back into the airlock. She's going to be retrieving uh, the crew lock bag you see there at the top left before moving out to the next work site. The next work site will be the RFG release. The crew members will not be removing the RFG entirely today. That stands for Radio Frequency Group, but will be preparing it for removal on a future spacewalk. Um, and you're going to keep a large, small ret on the crew lock bag. Copy. I'm not getting any engagement in these bolts. Okay, copy. I wonder if the socket is too if the socket too deep to so that it's not applying any downward force on the bolt. It's spring loaded. Okay. Captain, you may need to just push on the cover as well because the cover is probably going to pull that bolt back a little bit. And you may need your edge effector to react against. Okay. Yeah. And you may be able to use your end effector on that tether point of the adjacent one if you want to be kind of right next to it. Okay. Disregard that suggestion. Uh, but there is the handrail right there. Okay. Okay. Copy. Yeah, that is, it's where I want my end effector. Uh, hopefully it's not nerfed here.
challenge with the PVC is it getting in close enough that I can push the cover down. Yeah, Kathy, I don't know if uh, going body up uh, may help um, to try to be able to pull against the uh, seat of handrail uh, while pushing the PGT. Well, I can push the PGT. Um, were you saying it to push the cover down as well? Yeah, if we need it. We're just wondering if the kind of the memory on the cover is preventing the bolt from getting close to the threads. Yeah. Got it. What do you think about trying the 2 Alpha, 2 Bravo? And we are good with that. Just a reminder, two turns. Copy. Hand over. As heard called to the crew, we're in another satellite handover and we'll regain video and audio communications with the space station shortly. Laurel O'Hara continues to re, uh, reinstall the solar array rotary joint cover that was removed earlier today. We're now four hours and 16 minutes into the spacewalk. McBelly has made her way back to the airlock to retrieve a crew lock bag for the next task. Copy. Two turns on two Bravo. And these aren't, this isn't the final turns, right? Yeah, oh, that's it. correct, just the two turns. Okay. All right. Let's see. And so at this time, uh, just for big picture, we need uh, three turns on three bolts in order for it to be, uh, be able to remove that tether. And so um, we can try to uh, hand start or PGT start uh, any of the other four uh, for a total of three turns. Even one, Alpha, or Bravo? Yes, or if you can access those around the tether, then yes, you can try those. Okay. And the uh, thermal cover is closed. The uh, RFG bag is on my... Yeah, checking my safer handles now. Copy. Right side is down. Copy right side down. We'll also take a glove and a half when you're done with the left side check. Copy. Okay, left side is down. Copy and a glove and a hat, please. Hat is dry. I tried moving my BRT. Copy I'm going heads up like you suggested. Do you want gloves or just? 
Copy gloves. Uh, at this time, you can translate back to the ESP2 uh, work site. Um, reminder that you've got the uh, setup, ESP2 setup steps. Uh, there are going to be some variation uh, since we're not using the arm, but those should be obvious. Um, so we're going to translate starboard around ESP2, and we're going to tack that uh, crew lock bag down on handrail 8007. Copy. 8007. As you heard from Ground IV and McLean speaking with O'Hara and McBelly. Just after the RFG. Yeah, copy. The crew will not be using the Canid Arm 2 today uh, to assist them in the RFG removal. That's Radio Frequency Group. And again, due to the difficulties that uh, were experienced today, the crew members won't remove the RFG entirely, but instead will prepare it for removal on a future spacewalk. Okay, yeah, seat belts, safety tethers. And I will try to say eight or both of them. Copy. Okay, looking for 8007 on the port side. And that's on the starboard side. It should be just after the RFG. Oh, sorry. Starboard is what I meant. Thank you. You were going to the right place. Yeah. Not a bad translation without the uh, full NBL structure in the way, huh? Yeah, it's definitely better. Okay, I'm at 8,007. And Laurel, uh, Jaws is in a good breakout position. We want to know your opinion on whether it's uh, you think it'd be helpful to get these remainder bolts with both of you working on it. Um, I don't think so. My feeling. Um, it's just, I mean, one person could hold the panel down, I guess, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much how, how much leverage they could get on it while someone's also in there with the PD or even just their hands. Okay, we I think I'm in a better position now to have one hand one hand on the PD. Okay. Uh, let us know how that one works. Uh, just for your awareness, yeah. uh, we've got your heck off again. Okay, copy. All right, for Jaws, um, if you'd want to retrieve the large small ret from that crew lock bag, and you can connect the small hook uh, to the inner stanchion of the out starboard most spare joint fram handrail, uh, just one of those uh, handrails that's in between the RFG and just aft of it. 
that um, the small would go to that in route, the large to 8007, correct? Yeah, that's correct. The the large or the small hook on the on the stanchion, and then the large hook can stay on eight zero zero seven. That's what we're going to use once we pull the MLI back. Yep, copy. And my TCV is set to four. Copy EV one TCV four. Okay, I got one alpha driven two turns. The TTP. Copy one alpha has two turns. I'm going to go for one Bravo. And I have one Bravo driven with two turns. Okay, copy. Nice work. Thanks. Nice job, Laurel. Yeah, very nice job, Laurel. Um, do you think Fine, that uh, the right. <laughs> we'd like to give the old college try on the threes again, uh, if you think you can get in a good potty position for those? Okay. And for Jaws, in case uh, you get done with that tether and we're um, talking, your next step after that is going to be to release the quarter turn fasteners. There's a total of 10 on them around the uh, RFG. Let's copy. Okay, the uh, RFG bag is bestowed on 8007. Secure. Copy. And it's just the attempt though, so I don't need to really pack it down or Yeah, but that's a it's a temp so location because we actually move it to another location if we were going to do the RFG remove. Um we'll probably uh we may leave it there uh for now, so however you think it's secure. Okay, copy. Okay, and it looks like I was able to start um three bravo. We are gonna start engraving the trophy down here. Yeah, also seems to just <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> wow. Well, then we also have the one that I loosened on cover three. Yes, we are tracking that one. Um, how many turns did you get on the hand start? That one? I haven't done anything with the cover three one alpha. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, sorry, one bravo. And then the other. For three Bravo, I put two turns with the PGT. Okay, three Bravo, you got two turns with the PGT. So we got two turns on the ones and the three Bravo. Uh, three Alpha, we have no turns on, and we have a total of three turns on the twos. Correct. Right. And Anne, I'm not sure why, but there I I thought there should be another adjustable on the outside of this deck. Um, but there's just 
one integral, so it's uh, stowed by that. Okay, yeah, that's a good config for the temp stow. Okay, copy. Okay, and this uh, small hook is coming over to the uh, private joint next to the RFT. Okay, copy. For Laurel, um, if you could try two turns with the PGT on three alpha. Okay, I try, I did, but I can try. And say again, last uh, Laurel. One failed very. Uh, I did. I did try two turns on three alpha, um, but I can try again if you like. No, we don't need to retry it. Um, so we'll go on to the uh, final torquing. Okay. Um, so we're going to access the uh, the ones first. So the ones closest to the tether point. Uh, and you. You are go to release your tether, and we're going to drive. Okay, I can keep, I'll just keep driving, and I'll get the tether, that's okay. Sure, as long as it's not in your way. Um, so we've got alpha one clockwise two, and we're going to drive to torque on the ones. Okay, copy, I've got alpha one clockwise two set, and I'm driving to torque. Good read back. Just over four hours and 30 minutes into today's spacewalk, Laurel O'Hara reinstalling the solar array rotary joint cover. I put five turns on Alpha 1. Three might for 2.4. Copy 2.4. This view from helmet camera of Jasmine McBelly, who is at the RFG, the Radio Frequency Group, and working to remove some fasteners. Again, we won't be removing the entire RFG today, as was planned. However, they will put it into a good configuration for future removal. We copy all. Those are good bolts for 1A and B. Um, so, uh, again, same PGT setting, alpha 1, clockwise 2, and you're going to drive to torque uh, 3 alpha, 3 bravo, 2 alpha, 2 bravo. Okay, we didn't start 3 alpha, so I'm going to do same. Wait, could you repeat that? Yep, and uh, Laurel, sorry, I was just double checking that. So your alpha one, clockwise two, uh, you do not need to worry about bolt three alpha, uh, the one that we can get hand started, but we will hit the cover three bolt um, with that same alpha one, clockwise two. Six, copy. And Jaws, nice work on the quarter turn fasteners. We see you making your way around there. Um, that was, I came off, I think it was four turns, um, but it, not, it may have been three turns, but I got 2.3 torque in a green light. Okay, copy, and what bolt was that? That was three Bravo. Three Bravo, copy. And are we still uh, moving the adjustable from the... MLI to the clamshell, or are we foregoing that? Checking. Uh, 
And yeah, Giles, we are going to move that adjustable so that we can get the MLI open. Um, so you'll, uh, it, it should be looped through on the clamshell so you can release the equipment hook from the MLI tent and put it on the clamshell handhold strap and cinch it down. Okay, copy, just trying to make sure I release the right thing. Okay, it looks like this one. Yeah, so the expected config is that it's looped around the, the clamshell handholds and attached to itself, and then the hook is on the MLI tent. So we're looking at that hook that's on the MLI tent. We'll remove and put it on the other clamshell one where the wire tie is. Yes, you are. And we're also going to do the Alpha One Clockwise Two on the uh, on the Cover Three bolt. So yes, you are go for Two A and Two B. Three and a half turns, light two point four torque. We copy. As we wait to regain communications from video on the International Space Station. This is the International Space Station Flight Control Room in Houston, Texas. And Laurel, did you say that was a 2.3 torque? Confirmed. Okay, good bolts. Uh, nice work. Um, so if we can go for the bolt on cover three. Copy, bolt on cover three. And is that to torque, or do you want me to put the initial two turns on it? Checking. And you can go ahead and uh, drive it to torque, Laurel. Uh, 7.3 torque. Copy. Thank you. That leads us in a great config out there. Um, really great work on that cover, Laurel. Um, you got some happy people down here. Uh, so at this time, we can uh, stow your PGT. I think you did move the base of the RET, so we'll transfer that RET back onto your swing arm. And you'll be picking up the ORU bag and then just doing a nice good scan to make sure we didn't uh, uh, leave any tools or tethers out there. And we would also love a glove and hat check from you, Laurel. Okay. I'll still my PGT and then take that. Nominal gloves and it's very happy. Copy. Thank you for keeping me out of trouble, Laurel.
Okay, and just uh, so you're aware, so the adjustable equipment tether is, it's disconnected from the MOI, but I think I need to attach it when I go around the other side. Okay, we understand. And uh, Judge, if, you, if it's easier, you can rotate that clamshell. And if you remember, one of the things that we were gonna do is kind of a uh, fit check for the snugness on that. Um, and so if you do end up rotating it, uh, we'd love your words on that for awareness for next time. Okay, copy. Six quarter turn fastener is done so far. Copy. And now eight. Copy eight quarter turn fasteners. Right, uh, I have that right back on my mini workstation. It started. And I think next I'm ready to pick up my barrel for my safety tether. We concur. And then pick up the trundle bearing bag. Yep, that's correct. We're going to get the uh, large ORU bag on your uh, on your BRT. And then you've got the, we're counting the one fair lead. And then before you get back to your green hook. Copy. Okay, and all 10 quarter turn fasteners have been released. Happy that you have all of the quarter turn fasteners released and were you able to reattach that adjustable? No, so I'm gonna get it when I go back around. Okay, I got you. Um, so our next steps are gonna be to remove that MLI tent from the SASA. And so you um, from whatever angle uh, you can, it kind of opens like a book to the aft side. This view from McBelly's helmet camera, she works to remove the MLI or multi-layer insulation cover from the RFG. You also heard McLean reference the SASA, that's the S-band antenna sub-assembly. And Jaws, as you're uh, accessing the RFG, this will be our first look at that Z93 paint. If you have any uh, words on the condition of it, or if you see any flaking, just let us know. Okay, copy. I'll take a good look. So far, it looks pretty good. Copy. Now at four hours and 45 minutes into the spacewalk, O'Hara has completed the trundle bearing assembly removal, lubrication and replacement, and has reinstalled the solar array rotary joint thermal cover. She'll now move to help McBelly on this uh, radio frequency group work. Again, Two crew members, uh, Steve Bowen and Sultan Alniadi, worked to remove this earlier this year, but ran into some unexpected issues. 
The crew today will not be able to remove it either, but are putting it in a good configuration for removal on a future spacewalk. Some words for uh, both of you while you're um, working your those steps. Uh, JAWS CP8, we just got a good check out on it. Uh, the pan and tilt is working. We're not seeing any of the uh, problematic areas that we did before. Um, so nice work on the cable. Awesome, good news, nice job. Laurel, for you big picture, um, the steps that JAWS is working through um, are, are mostly one person tasks and so for your next steps, we're going to have you take that large ORU bag all the way back to the airlock and then stow it inside the airlock and get the bolt puller all the way. And also on the way, we're going to have you do the uh, CETA brake handle get ahead. Okay, copy. As was shared with the crew members, uh, the tasks that Jasmine Mobelli is working on right now don't require a second set of hands. Therefore, Laurel O'Hara is going to move to working on a get ahead task. Wire tie is still fully installed on the clamshell. It is. Good news. That's a great view. As McBelly works to prepare the RFG for removal on a future spacewalk, O'Hara is moving to the starboard portion of the International Space Station to work on the CETA, or Crew Equipment in Translation Aid, cart.
She's going to be reconfiguring a brake handle at that location. the TBA bag on my ERP. Okay, copy Laurel. Um, one good last look at the work site, make sure everything's picked up and you're go to translate inboard and retrieve your green hook below the FHRC at mile marker 9180. Copy. Work site looks good and clear. I'm picking up my waist feather and sliding in board. Copy. We're in another satellite handover and we'll regain communications with the space station shortly. At my green foot location. Copy, and we just came out of a handover, but um, I think I copied Laurel saying you have your green hook. I am, I do. Okay, you're going to translate inboard to the uh, CETA brake handle location. This is the uh, starboard CETA cart on the portinator brake handle. I'll stop. And I said I just, I just got my green hook. Okay. It's all picking up my green. Okay, copy Laurel, thanks. I've got my green hose back on my red reel. Okay, we understand you have a green hook and we do have video back, but I see you at 3651. The AMAT adjustable is now tight around the clamshell as well. Okay, copy, John. So you can work that uh, MLI um, back and reminder it kind of moves to the back and then we're going to roll it and then use the large hook and there are some soft tether points that are just inside the bolted side of the MLI on the RFG and that large hook uh, from 8007 goes over the MLI and can kind of tack it down. 
Okay, copy. Laurel, so you go on inboard. Um, reminder, as you go past the port CETA cart, that we'd like you to depress the uh, CETA brake handles a couple of times on the port CETA cart as you make your way to the starboard one. Copy. And sorry, just to clarify, that's the brake release pedals, not the handles. And 7890 Laurel is about where you'll start running into Port Cedar Cart. Okay, I'm at the Port Cedar Cart. Kathy, you can just depress the uh, brake release pedals twice and continue inboard to the starboard Cedar Cart. Happy. All right, I have these starboard to the cart. Okay, copy you at the starboard seat of cart. Um, so just to orient you to the work site, um, on the Nader port, port. Nader port, uh, Nader port brake handle, you'll see is bent over at a 90 degree angle ish. Yep, I'm here and I see it. All right. And I, th I think it is about exactly 90. So, yep, so we're going to straighten it, slide the collar over. You're going to straighten it, then slide the collar over the joint, and then you're going to rotate that collar to engage the pin in the jig groove. All right, and then we'll just point that brake toward the MT. That took just a little less time than the TBA.
Okay, and that's pointed towards the MT. That can you can do we have a heck of view or any camera view? We can, and pointed, that's uh, like, we are. Uh, it's still below the cedar rail, but pointed towards the cedar rail. Okay, okay. And then that's the that's the cedar rail and the MT. Okay, so that's the cedar rail and the MT. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. And that's the great config Laurel. Go ahead. Okay, and that's uh, MLI tended back. Okay, Jaws, and we hear that the, the MLI is tended back. Yeah, it's from two of you. Okay, and do you have a good view of the aft side of the RFG where those Could wedge clamps are? Stand by one. Copy, and for Laurel, you're heading back uh, to the airlock, picking up the bolt pullers that are on the toolbox uh, on the way. Okay. Copy. Okay, I'm looking at the, I can see four of them clearly. The center one is hard to see. Okay, and what we're looking for, we'd like an inspection um, on the status of RTV on those wedge, wedge clamp nuts. All right, so pull them all out back for the nuts, correct? And yes, there's an MLI that goes around the mounting plate. Uh, EV1, I'm just on the far side of the seat of cart now. I'm going to put my uh, back TDA bag into the better config. I right, start heading major. Okay, we copy. Now over five hours into today's spacewalk. Jasmine Bumbelli, whose camera view you have on the left, and uh, you can see there, is wearing the red stripes as EV-1 today, continues work on the RFG, the radio frequency group. It was planned to be removed in this spacewalk. However, the uh, spacewalkers will configure it for removal on a future EVA. Meanwhile, NASA's Laurel O'Hara has completed a get-ahead task on a crew equipment and translation aid cart. Additionally, today the crew has removed and replaced the trundle bearing assembly. Uh, and I don't know if you've got a good hike of view, but I would say it's probably the overestimate case of RTV. Okay, yeah, we don't have a good view uh, uh, just because it's night. It's a little bit dark, but. Uh, if you can do photos, if there's some flash on there, um, and any descriptive words, uh, we will definitely take. Copy. And I would say about uh, one centimeter depth of RTV on each one, and 
you know, just fully, fully white. Okay, Copy Jones, um, we are going to uh, have you try. Can you guys tell me about? Go ahead. Go ahead, Ann. Uh, I can hold for a second. Okay, I was just going to um, let Jaws know we are going to have you try to remove some of that RTV. Uh, so if you want to go to the crew lock bag R and pick up the EVA needle nose pliers. Okay, I'll just get some photos first. Asmund Belly is at the. If it's doable, you can get both the needle nose pliers and the dyno cutters. Um, otherwise, we think maybe the needle nose pliers may be sufficient. McBelly is now at the RFG, the radio frequency group. Again, we were looking to remove this today. However, she is going to start that process by removing some RTV. This is a liquid silicone rubber that solidifies at room temperature. Another snarl as I'm coming down the seat. Big back. Yeah. Okay, copy Here. Oh, and it looks like mine on that same MOI. And I'm going to continue. Copy, Laurel. And we did uh, we did know when uh, when Jaws packed down her safety tether on 252 on the top of the lab, there was a loop of uh, safety tether on some MLI on one of the struts, and uh, that might be what you're seeing too. Um, yeah. There's an open. Uh, Uh, TA plant that it was snagged on. Wake up. And for those needle nose pliers, you just want them on me? Yes, you can just throw them on your MWS. And try. Okay, and I, and I might go to start trying to remove this or? Yeah, so for the words, we think if you use the meaty part of the pliers instead of the end, then hopefully it'll come off into kind of a bigger chunk, and you want to have your trash bag ready to place any remnants in. Okay, copy. Okay, and confirm, I'm still, this plan is still for me to sew this TPA bag at the airlock. Yes, you'll be picking up the dyno cutters and, uh, or the, sorry, the bolt pullers that are on that um, toolbox, and we're going to stow both the large ORU bag and the bolt pullers back in the airlock. Copy.
And there's actually, there's no reason I need to transfer this to, to me, right? I can leave it on the to go right. Yeah, Joe, that's no problem. If they can reach and stay tethered to the back, that's fine. Okay, copy. On the right side of your screen is Laurel O'Hara's camera view. She has moved back to the airlock. She'll be stowing a bag there and picking up some new tools. Jasmine Mabelli is going to be starting the RTV removal. That's room temperature vulcanizing. It is the liquid silicone rubber that solidifies at room temperature. And removing this RTV should make it easier to uh, remove the entire radio frequency group on a future spacewalk. Hey, Laurel, I see you. Okay, can you see my tether pack? Step by one. Um, yeah, it's up. I see it. Yeah, it's going, it's going behind your legs and right under your foot. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, I think if I go straight down to the airlock, so I can clear that. Um, stand by. I actually don't have a good view right now. Um, Uh, so, because it's not on your, the back of your foot, huh? Uh, so I'm not going to be able to twist to get rid of it? I don't think so. I, well, I mean, if you can get your legs under it, yeah. All right, so the bolt cutters are on and adjustable, and I am ready to do one of the D-rings on the adjustable, and so I'm just going to release one of the hooks. Copy, we can cut. And I will just send it down to the airlock. For both of your awareness, uh, we're about one minute from a handout, and we're sitting uh, just over five hours of PET. Um, hard to determine ahead and behind since we're kind of in uh, different procedures, and we're talking about what we'll do uh, for the remainder of the time, but the limiting consumable is still EV2 battery. And Jaws, if you need to lock out that rent so you don't get the, the pull on the tools, you can. Five hours and 15 minutes into today's spacewalk.
And we're back with you both uh, after the handover. We don't have a video yet, um, but we're tracking uh, Jaws working the RTV and Laurel getting back to the airlock to stow the tools. For big picture for you all, um, we have about uh, 40 to 45 minutes um, uh, to work with the RFG. So Laurel, when you stow um, those items in the, uh, in the airlock, we'll have you go and assist JAWS over at the RFG. And what we'd like to do is get as much data as we can. If we can get the RTV removed, that's a win. If we can uh, get the uh, RFG wrench um, and the ratchet wrench out and uh, try to undo uh, some of the bolts, uh, that would also be a win. So any of the data we can gather uh, about the RFG task would be great. Okay, I'm back at the airlock and ready to open the thermal cover. You are going to open the thermal cover. O'Hara is back at the airlock. She will stow an orbital replacement unit bag inside before moving to the RFG, the radio frequency group, where McBelly is currently working. And you said to use the uh, thicker part? Yeah, what we're thinking about uh, when we tried this on the ground was that if you use kind of the thicker part of the, of the uh, um, needle nose pliers instead of the end, that it's more likely to come off in one big chunk rather than a bunch of little pieces. Okay, uh, it's pretty hard to have my trash bag out and uh, I'm like pretty nervous about my PTT uh, hitting a load in here. And Jaws, uh, can you just give us a status? Have you been able to pull any of the RTV off? No, I've, I've tried on a couple, but nothing has come off. Okay, we copy.
Laurel, are you, are you still at the airlock? Yes. Okay. The trundle bag is in the airlock. And I'm going to, I'm dropping the bolt cutters off here as well, right? That's correct. The bolt pullers will stay uh, in the airlock. Uh, but speaking of cutters, speaking of cutters for jaws, we think that maybe if you try the uh, dino cutters, um, we may have a little better luck on the RTV. Yeah, and when I tried the dino cutters uh, in uh, during OSB the other day, it was really hard to get a grip at all on them and have any sort of accuracy. Okay. So I, I'm just trying to get in a better body positioning here. Copy. And if you have any recommendations, just hard to get uh, in a position where I'm not hitting. Yeah, that makes sense. And if you can't get to the okay. perfect uh, to spot, any any words that you have that can help us develop this one for the next time, uh, we'll definitely take. Whether there's a tool you wish you had or a body position that you wish you could get into. I mean, I do think if I, you know, were in the arm and more stable, it would uh, potentially be possible. But right now, I think. Even if I drop a CRT, I'm afraid I'm going to hit this low gain antenna. Okay, we copy. Um, so I'm trying to wedge between this, you know, the width extender and the high gain, and then. I mean, if I sell my trash bag, at least it's not sticking out. But then I have nowhere to put the RTV. Copy, and Laurel's just getting out of the airlock, and I'll be over there in a minute if uh, if she could assist in either doing the cutters um, or holding a trash bag. Okay, copy. And do you have a good view now on the Micah? We do. It's not quite the angle that gives us a good uh, insight onto the RTV and the bolts. Okay. Right now. Yeah, we're looking, Jazz. Okay, hey, Jazz, uh, we're thinking that We'd like to see if we can fit check the RFG wrench. Um, so that is in the Kulak bag, and especially on that uh, middle one, uh, that's a little bit of a challenge to access. We're wondering if you could uh, get the RFG wrench out of the Kulak bag and give us a good fit check on that middle bolt. Copy. Yeah, let me just try one more time with the RTV from this location. I don't know. Yeah, I don't have my trash bag out. Okay, easy to. I've got the blurs. Code in the airlock. Copy. And one of the UIA, half UIA ring. Um, I need to figure out this snarl, feather snarl before I think, before I head that way, I think. 
um, unless there's a clean way for me to clear it en route. Oh, Jazz, I might need. Do you need to come up? I might. Okay. Bye. Okay, Laura, uh, I can see, I think if you rotate, uh -huh, to yaw to your left, left, okay, and just yaw all the way around, up I was thinking it might be to do in here. Okay, I see your tether coming up, now you should see it off your left. I think it's crossing. See it now? Right by the, uh, it's just coming off the airlock. Yep, good. Do it good. See, thanks. That. Okay, and so I'll grab the RP wrench. And I'm not, I'm still not seeing it in a good, you're not? Hang on. Back. Got my green tether reel right in front of me. Yeah, I see it off your left side, under your BRT, your, your tether pack. Is, is it trapped in my BRT or? Um, okay. Towards your head, like a uh, roll. Right. Oh, oh yeah, okay. If if you bring your like left arm, yeah, it's a, it's under your BRT. So, um, okay. Ah, uh, but uh. Right. Okay. That'll clear it. And basically just keep doing that. So it comes. Okay, now you see it? On your left side? Clear? Um, yeah, but it should be on my right side. It's kind of, yeah, it's coming in front of your body and under your BRT, that's all. So, okay. So, uh, Laurel, it may, uh, view, but for Laurel, it may give you a little bit of space if you want to translate a little bit away from your anchors. Uh, we see the um, thermal cover closed. Okay. Um, we're just going to be cleaning up from here. Um, Laurel, or Jaws is uh, not too far behind you, and as you translate away, you might be able to clean that up a little bit. It may also help if you undo your BRT from its stowed position. Um, but, uh, Jaws, uh, if you want to um, translate over and help her clear that, um, we're, but big picture, what we're going to be doing is uh, just cleaning up the MLI on the RFG, and then we're going to be uh, picking up the fair lead on top of the lab and then ingressing. Copy. Okay, copy. I see, yeah, Rob, yeah, if you un unstill your BRT, Laurel, okay, and pull it, you know, like, kind of up and forward, okay, I'm sorry, I can't see now that you've rotated, so, if you come back to the, if 
you do that, I... I think you'll be able to see it. Oh, yeah, I see it. It was caught in my DRT. Okay, yeah, it's clear now. Oh, I think I need to undo my DRT. I think I think I got it from here, though. Okay, copy. And, and can you say one more time? Uh, do you want me to try an RFD wrench before I pack this bag? No, we're uh, we're just going to pack up that bag, but we would like to ask you for a couple of photos um, of that aft part of the RFD before you put the MLI back on, and then we'll uh, uh, we'll get everything back into the crew lock bag, and then we'll kind of undo everything we did with the MLI, um, checking those quarter turn fasteners back down, moving the AET, and then we'll be heading back in. Okay, copy. All right, and EV2 is back in a good config. Excellent, Laurel, nicely done. Uh, so Happy if you well. want to assist with the uh, um, RFG cleanup and getting the MLI uh, back over, uh, you're welcome to translate out to the Nader side of ESP2. I'll be. Yep, so just uh, for next steps, Jaws will have you take a few of those pictures. Um, we don't need an inventory of the bag. We just like a visual confirmation that all the tools are stowed back in the bag. And then uh, Laura will have you uh, and Jaws both do the MLI on the RFG, uh, reset that to a good position, and then Laurel can take the crew lock bag back to the airlock, and Jaws can go pick up her adjustable on the top of the lab and uh, head back to the airlock. Copy. I have arrived at our seat. Copy. Jaws, I'm just at your head. What's up? I said I'm just at your head. Oh, okay, I see you. So what would be helpful to do? Um, are you able to go through that gap? Uh, yes, I think so. If you go that way and start working the MLI, actually, are you able to get photos from where you are? I need to get farther away. Uh, I could take some photos here. In this view, Jasmine Mobelli EV1 is up toward the top of the screen with the red stripe on her spacesuit. Just a reminder to reinstall that mounting plate MLI before the uh, larger MLI. Copy. Laurel O'Hara, who is EV2 today, is down toward the middle of the screen wearing no stripes on her suit. Both crew members are now at the RFG, the radio frequency group. Tell the chief 
on me back that way. And correction to my last, after the photos, you do not need to install that uh, mounting plate to MLI, just the uh, large tent. Okay, copy. I got some far out photos. Copy. The crew members will soon begin wrapping up for the day, now five hours and 37 minutes into the spacewalk. I will head between the SSR and the elbow. Chair C, what you're thinking? Yeah. And I'll uh, release this large small. And if the adjustable needs to go back on to the MLI. Yeah, affirmative. So that uh, where you took it off of the MLI tent, uh, we'll have that hook go back to the MLI and cinch it down. Okay, copy. Guys, I think it's a little well. It was. So that translation. I got it. Uh, my safety tether is going under it. My arm is way too loose and so. Uh, Jazz, I think this is a tight translation pass. I'm going to come around okay, the copy. way, the nominal way, like for the, that had me going for the procedure. Yeah, that sounds good. Now move this way. Probably doable. And Laurel, when you get a chance, uh, I did, forgot to ask you when you egress the airlock to do a safer handle check. We can see your left one is down, but if you can do a right safer handle check for us, please. Down. Copy, good check, thanks. Okay. 
Um, who wants to work your way around the other side and I can work? Follow you on these? Yeah, that sounds good. I'm just going to try to get one on, so it's big. Let's Coming up on five hours and 45 minutes into today's spacewalk, which started at 7.05 a.m. Central Time. Jasmine McBelly is reinstalling some multi-layer insulation covering over the RFG. That's the radio frequency group. The crew members are essentially wrapping up their tasks for today and will begin starting to move toward the airlock soon. Okay, two of the four we're doing on this side. Hey, copy. Let's get these three. I got two on this side. Copy. Something like. Did they turn all the way? So, yeah, they just turned quarter turn. You've got to get it right in the middle.
Now this is a tricky uh, Might be started, but not actually all the way a quarter. Now I'm underneath. And Laurel, from your current position, you may have a target of opportunity in front of you to do the AET repositioning that's on the side of the uh, clamshell. Um, it's kind of off your left shoulder right now. Copy. Nice work on those quarter turn fasteners. That's a uh, uh, an exciting task at the end of a long EVA, uh, but you guys are doing great. Yeah, I've got one more. The three, I've done three total. Um, and I might. My com cap or my the headband is having to slide over my eyes. Okay. Are you still good? You can still see? I can still see. Okay, you may be able to kind of push it up by moving your putting your back on the back of the helmet. That's what I'm doing. Okay, for Laurel, uh, we'd like you to pick up the crew lock bag that's by your yeah. right hand, and uh, you can start heading back toward the airlock. Okay. And if you have any issues uh, seeing or if it falls over your eyes a little bit more, we want you to put out down a local wherever you are. Okay. Laurel, well, our um, sorry, Josh. No, no, it's okay. Just what's the status on that side? Uh, uh, two, seven, and one is still just in line. Which one? The one on your right side or your left? The or one the farthest on my right. Okay, copy. All right, I'll see you back at the airlock pool. Okay. Okay, on the three, uh, which side am I on right now? The three on this side are done, Anne. Okay, we copy. Um, so the AET moving up by your right hand, uh, we see you getting the Velcro there. Okay, yeah, the AET I'll do from the other side. Okay, and can you confirm you got that large small red that we used to tie back the MLI? The large, just the large end is released. I did not get the small. It have not retrieved it yet. Okay, so that small end is still on the frame handrail. Yes, that's correct. Unless Laurel got it, which I don't believe she did. Okay, so. we'll probably have you pick that up, uh, Jaws, as Laurel's picking up that crew lock bag. Okay, copy. Jasmine Mambelli continues to secure the multi-layer insulation on the RFG. Laurel O'Hara is picking up a crew lock bag down at the bottom of your screen. 
once she picks that bag up, she will start heading into the airlock. And Laurel, if you see that headband getting worse at all, um, then just let us know and we'll go direct back to the airlock and, uh, and just get the crew lock bag. Okay, copy. I've, I've got the crew lock bag now. Okay, nice work. And it is a short translation if you want to just leave it tended to you, um, your choice. Okay, I will do that. Have my local picked up. Copy. Found the onion bearing. And we are in an expected satellite handover. The International Space Station is currently flying 260 statute miles above the Pacific Ocean. Dan? And we are back with you after the handover. Okay, copy. Um, purchasing the the adjustable equipment tether is back on the uh, MLI loop. Copy, nicely done. And so we just need to pick up that large small ret from the handrail and then uh, give a good work site survey, make sure we haven't left any tools or tethers out anywhere. And, and there's still, I believe there's still three quarter turn fasteners, so two, two of the four on this side. Which I'm working on right now. There's one. Almost. Okay, we copy. Good catch. And then that one on the, the starboard side that Laurel had a hard time with. Met the airlock. Copy. Copy, Laurel. And we just got video I back. So for Laurel, as you get to the airlock, you'll open up the hatch thermal cover and ingress and attach your waist tether to the airlock D-ring extender. And you can stow that crew lock bag in the airlock. Okay. Then the plan for me is to stay in there. That is correct. And Giles will be joining you here in just a few minutes. Okay, copy. Okay, and those two are down. Okay, we copy, Jones. And Laurel, as you go in, you may want to tuck your PGT a little bit tighter to the right side of your body um, to get in through the, the hatch. Copy. The others here. And it may be easier to do on the way in uh, to get a waist tether on the airlock D-ring extender and we'll need gate closed hooks locked. And uh, Laurel, that's uh, the 
small quarter turn fastener that you were not able to get, that's the one closest to where it uh, touches, right? I remember that one being tough to get off. Yes. Is it partially engaged? Um, it is not. Right, 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 we see that you are go to ingress and pull that crew lock bag in for JAWS. If we can't get that last quarter turn fastener, um, just do us a favor and make sure that there's no gaps in the MLI or holes uh, letting some sunlight in and we are go to leave that one unfastened. Okay, copy. And I'm just gonna stay put here and not move. Copy, Laurel. Copy, Laurel. The beautiful blue Pacific Ocean below Jasmine Mogbelli here as she works on the RFG, the radio frequency group. I thought I could go through this way, but I think I'll have to go back around. Okay, and we do not need all of those uh, fasteners, uh, but you just need to grab that large small that should be right next to your right hand. Yeah, I've got the large small. Do you want me to go back around and check on the quarter turn fastener? Well, do you know, was the MLI pretty tight? Like uh, on the side I was working on? Yeah, were there any gaps by where that quarter turn fastener was? Uh, no, it was. It was tight. That's what it, it was. That's what was making it difficult to turn the quarter turn fastener because you couldn't pull it tight enough. Yeah. You, know, you, you needed the you needed a little bit more slack in it to get the quarter turn fastener centered in the hole. Okay, and let me know if you're good with that, or if you want me to go back around. And we are good with that, uh, Jaws. Uh, thanks for the good check on that. Uh, so you can pick up the large small, and then we'll have you uh, trace your path back to lab handrail 252. Okay, and I've already got the large small. Copy, you're go to translate back. Six hours since the spacewalk started today at 7.05 a.m. Central Time. Jasmine Mugbelli is heading back to the airlock to reunite with Laurel O'Hara already inside as they prepare for uh, final ingress and repressurization. I'm translating up the up scanner on the lab. Copy, we see you. Your only other task after you pick up uh, your adjustable is to come up the lab struts. You'll come across face one, and when you're on the starboard CETA cart, we're going to have you depress those brake handles. The brake handle releases, and, uh, and then before you head back to the airlock. Okay, copy. Okay, I'm back at my uh, adjustable.
And, um, I see that crew lock bag outside. Still? Uh, well, you're, it's the crew lock bag I picked up. I thought it followed me in here. Oh, um, but it's outside the airlock. And Laura, we can have okay, Josh well, push that in when she gets there. Push that in too. Okay. As McBelly heads back to the airlock, a recap of what was accomplished on today's spacewalk. McBelly started by removing the H fixture in preparation. Just retrieving uh, my adjustable equipment tether from the fairies. McBelly started today by removing an H fixture, which will allow for future installation of an IROSA or a rollout solar array. Meanwhile, O'Hara removed a trundle bearing assembly. The team encountered uh, some difficulties, and McBelly was able to assist in that task. O'Hara then uh, placed lubricant around the solar array rotary joint before installing a new trundle bearing assembly. The solar array rotary joints help turn the solar arrays to the sun to gather power for the space station. McBelly also reconfigured an ethernet cable to bring it closer to the station structure and ground teams confirmed they're not seeing any issues they'd previously been experiencing when moving a camera in that area. O'Hara completed a get ahead of reconfiguring the starboard crew, trip, starboard crew equipment translation aid cart brake handle the crew then turned their focus to the radio frequency group. It was not fully removed as planned, but surveying that area has put it in a good configuration and helps the team better understand what can be done to remove it on a future spacewalk. And Laurel, just for awareness, um, are you able to see all of the UIA switches, buttons, and lights? Yeah. Copy, good news, thanks. Just a precarious position where the, either the headband or I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but where the com cap is just sitting kind of on top of my eyes. Okay, copy. Um, yeah, so we'll preserve. Uh, up, 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 off my, up off my eyes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we, we copy. Um, so we'll just have you stay as still as possible as long as you can see the UA switches. That was our biggest question. And uh, Giles will be back. Uh, she's just leaving the lab now, so she should be back your way in a minute. Copy. Thank you. I get this uh, 
large, small rat out of my way. Okay, I'm leaving the lab. Peace. Okay, I'm coming under the MT. Oh, I came up. Copy. Oh, that's the wrong step. Got some great views of you. Copy. And as you come to the uh, CETA cart uh, for the brake pedals, two pumps a day keeps the myrrh away. Thank you. Okay, coming down. Ada. Copy. Yeah, on the toolboxes. Copy, as you come down to the airlock, thermal cover's already open, uh, so we'll make sure that that crew lock bag gets tended back up into the airlock, and then we'll go through the uh, safety tether swap. Copy. And we don't need to do any disconnections or anything on the bag, just making sure that it's uh, in and out of your way. Okay, copy. Okay, I've got a local down, and all the vacs going to you. Okay, copy. All right, for Jones, uh, uh, we have a good safety or uh, waist tether check for Laurel, and so you can uh, ret to EV2's anchor hook on the forward external D-ring and release it. Copy. And you're going to be hooking that anchor hook to your waist tether and ensuring that the gates close, sliders lock. Okay, I can see my waist tether is closed, hook lock, black on black on my D-ring extender. Copy.
As McBully prepares to close the thermal cover, if you look down to the bottom left of the screen. You'll release the hook from the stowage tether point and attach it to the magnetic plate D-ring and cinch until six lines visible. This thermal cover being closed right now is not the airlock hatch itself that opens inward. We had a view for a moment from uh, Jasmine Mobelli's helmet camera. Once this thermal cover is secured, Copy, and we'll uh, just make sure the hook is off. Copy, and we'll just make sure the magnet is engaged, and then uh, release the hook and move it over to the plate magnetic plate D ring. Copy. Do I need to take my HECA off? And, and Laurel, yes, we will uh, have you push your HECA off as well. With the airlock thermal cover closed. Oh, this comes in. There we go. <laughs> like, where did it go? The crew members have been informed they can turn off their helmet cameras. And then cinch until six lines visible. And we are in a satellite handover. We'll regain that comm shortly. Both crew members are now inside the airlock. The spacewalk is not officially complete until repressurization begins. As Laurel and Jasmine uh, work their way through procedures in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, uh, ESA astronaut Andy Mogensen and JAXA astronaut Satoshi Furukawa will begin working in the equipment lock portion. Two, three, four, 
three, four, five, six trophies. The magnetic plate doesn't really... Oh, there it goes. Now it's engaged. Okay, for both of you, you can remove your SCUs from the stowage pouch, remove your DCM cover and Velcro to the DCM, and connect your SCUs. Laurel, if, uh, if this motion is going to cause the headband to kind of block your view, then just let us know, please. Okay, Laurel, I'm going to need to get further port. Okay. Let me get this on. And Jaws, this is where sometimes hooking your end effector to that internal uh, handrail and kind of holding yourself port is sometimes helpful. It didn't work right now. Thank you. I'm not sure what my you're hitting. And for Laurel, if you wouldn't mind pushing your HECA button one more time for us. That. And EV2, I have my FC connected. Jaws, what do you need? Um, I don't, what are my, uh, I'm not sure what my feet are hitting. And do you see my pouch? Oh, there. Uh, your feet are hitting the uh, ceiling or the top of the uh, airlock, kulak. In that communication coming from inside the space station, Andy uh, Mogensen now back in touch with the crew. Rail. And then right now you're on the uh, umbilical to SCU. Yeah, no, I'm just trying, I just can need to get more ports. And I'm sure. You've got um, uh, yeah. Laurel's uh, umbilical between your legs. Okay, that's not convenient. Okay, if I go back to starboard. Able to clear that. Can you see it, Laurel? You can't. Bring your left foot, can you bring your left foot down? Back of the knee and pull it back. It's the left one. Now, okay. you, now you've trapped it between your two feet. Well, Laura, are you able to push those back a little so I can see? Um, okay, Andy, so I've got my left leg bent. If you can pull your left leg down towards you, bend the knee and pull it towards you, you can all, and, and try to put the, and, Back at the same time. It's just on your toes now. Like that? I think so. I can't really see, but now you might have you might have resolved it. Almost. Andy, is there anything I can do? Uh, no, it's kind of hard to see, but I, I think I think there's enough slack that if you just walk back your if you just walk your feet back, I think you'll be okay. I mean, it'll um, be between your legs, hitting, but it shouldn't be the big deal. I'm hitting something that maybe your bliss will. I don't know. Might be my. Can you rotate towards the and the other way, like against the wall? How about that? You're hitting her place. That's what you're hitting. Your, your left. The foot is uh, kicking her the, the bottom of her place. Is that any better? Um, okay, I'm going kind of, you know, I think. Oh, so can you pull, pull your feet down towards the uh, hatch? Yep, how about that? I'm just going to see if I can get the, I just, it's the problem is like trying to undo the belcher to get this out. Looks like my site is under an umbilical.
Are you going to have enough move, room to move around to hatch out stuff? I'm not sure. Do you work this first? Okay. You can pull the bags out, yeah. it helps, yeah. That helps. Yeah, thank you. And just for awareness, when uh, Jaws, when you get the SEU connected, uh, just because of backflow, Laurel, you may get an O2 use high message. Okay, my SU is on and locked. Okay, copy. A uh, reminder that uh, to in you could increase cooling on the TCB to a higher number to minimize the risk of fogging. And you can switch your water off. Copy. Off OFF forward, water off. I'm going to adjust my TCV first. My water is off. Was, and was that Laurel for water off? Water is off for Laurel. Copy. Okay, my TCV is set to six, and water is coming off. Water's off. Okay, copy EV1 and EV2 have water off OFF, and we're gonna hold here for two minutes. Uh, so I'm just gonna take a quick second to tell you guys, really nice job on the EVA today. The highest priority task was completed. We haven't done checkout yet, but we'll update you when we do. We got the H fixture, we got the CP8 complete with a good checkout, we got a get ahead, and we got a lot of good info uh, for the RFG. Congratulations to you both uh, on, the, uh, on your first EVAs. And most importantly, you and the whole team here safely executed a complex and international mission at the edge of what humans are capable of. Nicely done. Thanks, Anne. Um, I'm going to also thank the entire RFG retrieval part two uh, EVA team, uh, both on the ground and uh, our crew members on board who helped prepare us. Uh, I'd also like to, um, to say that, you know, leading up to today and today is a reminder that space is pretty hard and difficult and there were a lot of things we needed to adjust to, but the team uh, flexed very well, uh, yet remained steady and grounded, and we appreciate that. And uh, I'd also like to thank my uh, my friends and family. This is a very special moment for me, going out on my first spacewalk with a good friend and someone I really look up to, Laurel. Uh, so thank you for giving me this, and thank you to my friends and family. Uh, I be really believe it takes a village, and I've got a strong village. Uh, Sam, thanks for taking care of everything back home. And Zelda and Estelle, Mommy loves you, and I hope this is a reminder that uh, dreams can become reality. And Laurel, I know uh, you'd like to say a few words as well. Those are awesome words, Josh. Thanks, Laurel. Um, and I feel the same way about this spacewalk with you. And I just wanted to add my own huge thank you to everyone that helped prepare us for today, and not just for today, but um, all the way since we were at CANS uh, starting in 2017. Um, just to all of our systems and task instructors who uh, we owe all of our knowledge to the suit engineers to ensure we have a safe suit. Uh, to all the MBL divers and MBL staff who have you know, been some of our best and also some of our toughest moments in our astronaut careers. And of course, the instrument team, and the EVA team, uh, for putting all the pieces of the puzzle today to make this happen. Um, you were all with us here every moment of today, and we really appreciate it. Um, it's a great honor to get to represent you up here and to get to be a part of this team. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity and grateful for all the support. And I'm um, grateful to my family and friends as well for all the support they've had, especially my sister Caroline and Zena, who have, I've leaned on more heavily than most in the last two years. 
Okay, <laughs> thank, thank you all, and um, yeah, we really appreciate it. All right, lots of smiles around the room. Thank you to you both. Uh, at this time, Jaws, you can verify that the outer hatch is clear of hardware. And verify. Copy, I still need to get into a better position. Okay, copy. We're now coming up on six hours and 30 minutes into the spacewalk. Uh, we did just hear that the port charge yeah. uh, successfully drove. So nicely done to both of you guys. Excellent. Okay, um, I can verify that it's clear of hardware. Happy verify the hatch handle is per the hatch decal. <laughs> And I still have something keeping me from going over to Zenith. At Zenith? Yeah, I need to get my head up so I can get the hat, but... Oh, uh, okay. the stuff that's below me so I can move my legs later? Yep, stand by. How's that? Not getting better. Uh, it's hitting I think you're also, uh, I think you're also on me in some ways because. Yeah, is that pulling you? Yeah. I don't know if it's my FD new or. Yeah, because I cannot get in the position right now. Any easier, I think if my foot was. How far port is my are my legs? Andy, can you are you Andy or are you still at the hatch? Yep. I mean, you can come further. I think your places might be um, hitting each other at the bottom. So, Laurel, if you try to rotate. Uh, which way? And for me to rotate. Down and then look forward. Face, look station forward. So look to your right. Oh. Sure. Then try to pull yourself as close to the wall as possible. Jaws, if you roll to your right, then you should deconflict. You will de deconflict your places. Okay, copy. Let me get this. We're about to have a handover. See you on the other side. Copy. And a handover right on time. The crew now at six hours and 32 minutes. Uh, the spacewalk clock continues to count as repressurization of the airlock hasn't begun just yet, but we heard some fantastic words from Ground IV and McLean mentioning that indeed this was a complex spacewalk and uh, McBelly and O'Hara reflecting on their time outside as well as some special shout outs at home. Can you roll to my right this way? Yeah, roll to your right. And, yeah, like that. Oh, but I'm, I'm still hitting something. Need to get your head. Um, I, oh, there we go. I can start to see it. I'm cleared up. Okay. Okay, it's in the black region. Okay, so when you're ready, Jaws, when you can verify that that hatch uh, handle position is per the decal, uh, you're going to close and lock the hatch. Yeah, it is per the decal. And 
the uh, card has floated in there. A clear view of your seat now. Um, okay, the hatch is closed. I just need to close and lock it. Copy. I understand the hatch is closed and locking isn't work. Okay, and just the head. What did you say, Laurel? Oh, no, you're good. Keep going. Your place is just kind of right at my knees right now, so a heads up. It is latched, now just working on the lock. Good job. And you may need to wiggle the handle a little bit in order to get that lock, Jez. Okay, thanks. My defector back down. I can go ahead and give you um, oxygen EM and two valves are open. Okay, copy, thanks. And there's no set position it needs to be in, and this is just a pull down, push down, correct? Yeah, and you, you may need to push it down, so it's got to be kind of perfectly aligned, and so you may have to kind of wiggle that handle and push down on the lock. As hatch closure steps continue in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, this is a view inside the equipment lock portion. On the left is NASA uh, is JAXA or Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut, astronaut Satoshi Furukawa. Okay, that, that one, I see. Yeah, the little black one. Okay, it is locked. Okay, we understand. Closed and locked. Hatch closed and locked. Uh, so, and Laurel already confirmed the oxygen hey, at EMU one and two valves are open. So, Laurel, you can switch uh, power EV1 and two to on ON and verify the LEDs are on ON and volts between 18 and 19. Okay, EV1 is on, standby. I mean, EV2 is one and now EV. 
Two and EV1 are both on. Copy. Uh, check that the uh, LEDs, two of them are on, and the power volts are between 18 and 19. Uh, both LEDs are on, and volts are both 18.6. Copy at this time on your DCMs. You can both switch your powers to SCU and expect a warning tone. Is SCU. Copy EV1 is SCU. It's wrong. Here's SCU. Hello? It is our uh, SCU. Okay, understand both EV1 and EV2 are to SCU. At this time, I'll hand you over to Andy for the rest of the repress. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Hey, Andy. Hey, Jaws and Lola, welcome back. So we are going to begin crew lock repress. Uh, first, a warning, if you're on SOP, Leave your O2 actor in EV, but I don't think either of you are on SOP. Uh, so on your DCM, take your O2 actuator to press and verify on your DCM that it says O2 actuator in press. Mine is off. Okay, okay. EV one O two is press. May we verify on the TM? Hey, it's great. It says O two uh, is press. Excellent. Work. And Jaws, you can check that the EV hatch MPEV is closed. It is closed. Copy. Yeah, I'm in press. Copy, Lowell, you're on press, and uh, can you verify on your TCM that it displays press? Hey, hey, firm. It's a T. Say again? Uh, a hey, firm. Have a good display. Copy. So we are ready to repress. I will crack the um, patch equalization valve here and go slowly. Let me know if uh, I need to stop at any time, okay? Okay. Copy. Andy Mogensen, ESA astronaut in the center of the screen, now leading the crew members through the repressurization process. Standing by for repress to begin. And with repressurization beginning at 1.47 p.m. Central Time and the spacewalk starting at 7.05 a.m. Central Time today, that leads us to a six-hour and 42-minute spacewalk, the first for Mobelli and O'Hara. As repressurization continues, uh, we will recap what 
today's uh, spacewalk entailed. As Ground Ivy and McLean said, a very complex spacewalk and a lot of great work accomplished. Mogbelly completed removal of the H fixture in preparation for future installation of an IROSA, that's an International Space Station rollout solar array. Meanwhile, O'Hara removed a trundle bearing assembly, lubricated the area on the solar array rotary joint, and installed a new trundle bearing assembly. The ground has since confirmed that to be a successful replacement, and the hardware is working properly. Mobelli reconfigured an Ethernet cable. The ground also confirmed that they are not seeing any issues they'd previously been experiencing when moving a camera in that area. And O'Hara was able to complete a get-ahead task, reconfiguring the starboard crew equipment translation aid. And at 5 PSI, I will stop uh, repress and we'll uh, do a lead check. At this time, TV2. Copy. I'm showing uh, air light pressure one decimal two. I think that was just the time from it cycling back and forth. Hey. Three PSI. Copy. Copy. I got the town. Yeah. 
One of the tasks slated for today's spacewalk was the removal of the RFG, a radio frequency group. Uh, it was previously attempted on a spacewalk earlier this year, and the teams ran into some trouble. Uh, that was not removed today. However, the site was inspected, and the teams here on the ground have a better understanding for what can be attempted for removal on a future spacewalk. Okay, we're going to wait two minutes for the Kulak pressure to stabilize, and then we'll um, check the pressure over a minute. Copy. Repressurization continues in the crew lock, now uh, about 5 pounds per square inch, 5 PSI. Again, we're bringing that up to 14.7 to make it equal with uh, what we experience here on Earth and with the rest of the International Space Station. As repress continues, Let's take a look at some of the statistics from today's spacewalk. It started at 7.05 a.m. Central and ended at 1.47 p.m., meaning it was a 6-hour and 42-minute spacewalk. It is the 269th spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. It's the 12th spacewalk from the space station this year and the second for Expedition 70. Total spacewalk time for Expedition 70 with one Roscosmos spacewalk and one U.S. is 14 hours and 23 minutes total. It's the first spacewalk for both O'Hara and Mogbelli. Again, total time of 6 hours and 42 minutes. And the total spacewalk time for all 269 spacewalks in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades is 1,710 hours and 49 minutes. That's equal to about 71 days, 14 hours, and 23 minutes of spacewalking time. crew continues to step through the repressurization process. We will remain on air until both crew members are back inside the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock. They're safer, so that simplified aid for EVA rescue. Of course, we didn't see that used today. Those will be doffed or removed, and we will stay um, in on air until their helmets are removed today. All right, we show a good leak check. Um, check that your buff meters are off, OFF. Buff meters are off. Damn. Check your gloves for contamination and report to Houston. Uh, no contamination for EV2, just the grease uh, that we've already talked about. And EV1 has uh, actually Less scuff marks than earlier, it seems, and nothing else. Use the copies. Put them out. <laughs>
Okay, so warning, if CUF-1 symptom, symptoms resolving upon repress report as CUF-2 to ensure proper DCS treatment, if any DCS, leave O2 actuator and press to maintain high air suit pressure. All right, so you can take your O2 actuator to IV now. Okay. Is IV verified on the display? Another satellite handover with the space station. And as you can see, teams in the room are preparing for handover as well. The team leading the spacewalk today uh, has been the Orbit 2 team. And again, as mentioned, this is staffed 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So the Orbit 3 team will uh, come and replace this team to get some well-deserved rest. O'Hara and McBelly are still in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock as that repressurization continues. Again, a six hour, 42 minute spacewalk today, the first for both of them. Yeah, you're disgusting, it. I know. Not fighting, though. Yeah. The thrust, yeah, it's thrust, and then I've got it is like staying kind of down, you know, you yeah. don't engage to fly, but then it's not sliding. Me. Uh, I wonder if I can. Can you roll to your right so I can get past your BRT? If you put your, can you put your BRT down further? It's just you'd have to roll so I can get to it. I don't know if you can. Okay. Now I can't see, so I'm doing it blind. I can show this. What? Can you see? Um. Uh. 
After holding at 5 pounds per square inch, 5 PSI pressure uh, to accommodate some routine leak checks, the repressurization has begun. We're at 8 PSI, and once uh, we reach, uh, or once uh, DPDT is about zero, then you can expect an alert tone. Copy.
Two PSI. Okay. Copy. The airlock now over 10 PSI as it works its way back up to about 14.7 to uh, equate with the rest of the space station. Also, the uh, percentage we're used to here on Earth. Again, today's spacewalk, six hours and 42 minutes. Now over 13.6 pounds per square inch as repressurization of the crew lock continues. All right, I think uh, we've equalized. We'll start uh, preparing to open the hatch. Great, copy. With repressurization of the crew lock complete, Mogensen will prepare to open the hatch that separates the crew and the crew and equipment lock portions of the Quest airlock. And just as Mogensen and Furukawa assisted the crew in getting suited up this morning, they will assist the crew in doffing or removing their suits as well.
and the hatch is now open between the crew and equipment lock. That's NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara being helped back into the equipment lock portion first. As O'Hara and Mugbelli are helped out of their suits, another recap of the tasks accomplished today, a complex spacewalk. First off, Mugbelli removed the... ...would be appreciated. Satoshi, that didn't work. First today, Mugbelli completed removal of the H fixture, which allows for future installation of an IROSA solar array. That's a rollout solar array. Meanwhile, O'Hara worked to remove a trundle bearing assembly, then lubricate the area before re or before installing a new trundle bearing assembly. This is on the solar array rotary joint that helped rotate the uh, solar arrays to keep track with the sun. McBelly reconfigured an Ethernet cable, and the ground teams confirmed that was successful, and they have no uh, conflicts with a camera that is in that area. O'Hara also completed a get-ahead, reconfiguring the starboard crew equipment translation aid, also known as the CETA cart, working on a brake handle in that area. Ground teams also confirmed that the trundle bearing assembly O'Hara installed today is working as planned. The crew moved on to work on the radio frequency group, but did not have enough time to remove it as was previously planned. But the teams on the ground now have a better understanding of the configuration of that area and will make plans for a future spacewalk.
Jaws and Laurel Houston. You are no longer hot mic. Welcome back and congratulations. Both crew members are back in the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock. Andy Mogensen in the center of the screen. He is current ISS commander and uh, assisting with the suit doffing today. Again, today's spacewalk, six hours and 42 minutes. The first spacewalk for both O'Hara and Nobelli. Houston airlock, PCV position above three. Houston copies.
Again, both crew members, Laurel O'Hara and Jasmine Bumpelli, completing their first spacewalk today in six hours and 42 minutes, both back in the airlock and preparing for their helmets to be removed. Receiving some assistance from JAXA's Satoshi Furukawa and ESA's Andy Mogensen. Airlock Houston on one for photo request. Video on one. Hey Satoshi, we have a request for photos of Laurel's headband. So if you could uh, take a few for us, we'd appreciate it. Okay, in work. Closer to the end of the spacewalk, Laurel O'Hara's headband started to slide down a little bit. Teams will uh, photograph that for preparation for any future spacewalks.
With Mugbelly's helmet and gloves removed, we are just standing by for Laurel O'Hara's uh, helmet to be removed. Again, these two these two crew members having completed their first spacewalk, totaling at six hours and 42 minutes. And with both crew members, Laurel O'Hara and Jasmine Mobelli, back inside the International Space Station's Quest airlock and their helmets removed, we are going to wrap up our coverage for today. Again, today's spacewalk for these two, it was both of their first venture outside the hatch, totaled at 6 hours and 42 minutes. A successful spacewalk accomplishing some very complex tasks for the International Space Station. And we look forward to the next opportunity to see the work done outside the hatch. This is Mission Control Houston. I'm Jessica Ariola, and I am the lead for public and digital engagement for the Quest mission. Me llamo Jessica Ariola, y soy la líder de comunicaciones para los medios sociales y en persona. My role with the mission is to communicate using social media channels or in person at events. The Quest mission is seeking to change rules that essentially would enable commercial supersonic flights over land. So for me, that's really exciting because that means that I would get to go from Washington